evening, party people. My name is Cameron, and I'm a, it's a pleasure to be your bartender tonight. I don't know why I changed things up the beginning time there. Welcome back to the bar with an X. There's an X somewhere on this bar. I absolutely promise you that, although it's not actually currently on camera and probably won't be. It's down there, but it's also technically up here. Whoa. Sorry, I whacked the microphone. Tonight's theme is the month that we're in. It's true. It's Pride Month. It's a prideful, prideful month for people both out there, out there, in between, beyond, male, female, otherwise, it really doesn't matter who you are. Y'all are welcome here at this bar because it is an all accepting and coexisting place. At least that's what we try to make it to be. And uh, since I'm the only one here, uh, everybody is accepted because I am physically the only one here. Anna's downstairs. She's also specifically accepted. And anybody else wandering out there, welcome. You have a seat. Although there is not seats anywhere to be found, let's just let's just like exist in the metaphor that is my head cannon, and just imagine we're all we've all taken our seats by this point. In any case, we're gonna get things started around here. I was trying to look through as a I guess I'll give a little bit of background for all the intents and purposes. We are all prideful individuals here at the bar with an X. I love the effect. The I, I love the I guess the thinking back to things for a moment. I had a really kind of like rough start with the acceptance of people in the pride community. And mostly it was because of the way that the, the culture of my upbringing and stuff. And many, many years later, now that I find myself here, a little bit prideful myself as well, I uh, had a bit of a turnaround. And it's just all in, all in all, without getting too much into the philosophy of it all, because we're here for cocktails after all, you should be able to do love whatever you want to love, you know? What happens behind those closed doors is quite frankly none of my business. So long as you're not like putting people down or like doing weird things with like children and stuff, I think we're gonna be okay and not taking advantage of others. But alas, ethics and morals and stuff of that out of the way. It's cocktail time tonight. In, in the endeavors to be able to kind of channel the, I guess kind of, um, to kind of channel the celebration of it all, I was trying to think of like the best ways to do a like a pride-based cocktail stream. And to be honest, there is no best way to do anything like this. Uh, so I decided to pick the way that I was going with. I had a couple ideas, such as trying to do every like every single like layered shot representing all the different flags out there, which would be a mathematical nightmare and a lot of just playing around with densities and stuff. And quite frankly, nothing would really taste good. Everything would kind of look okay, but it probably wouldn't look the best. It just didn't feel like the best way to celebrate for things. Uh, the other side of things was to find, let's say, a bunch of, of prideful creators out there and all of their creations and just like take a bunch of them and put them into the stream and be like, go check out this one and go check out that guy and go check out that gal in person. Um, but, to, but to be fair, trying to search for that specifically, is it's, it's a little bit tough. I find like not everybody is super duper open about that stuff. Some people are. I have some favorites of mine that we'll cover in a little bit. Um, but that was an idea. Uh, and the other idea was just try to find like different drinks out there that were like kind of very, very prominent in the pride communities out there, gay communities, lesbian communities, you know, trans communities and whatnot. Um, but you know, it was a little tough to search for some of those little niche cocktails too. So we find ourselves with this combinational stream of attempting to pull from all of those different areas. Uh, what I'll be covering tonight are some prideful cocktails, both in their influence in the society of prideful culture. People who I know who are very prideful, who have created cocktails of their own, whom I love very much in the content that they're, they're create, their uh, they is creating. And of course, it wouldn't be pride without the colors. So there'll be a colorful cocktail in there too. So as we get things started around here, I think the first thing that I think of, obviously, when I think of pride, other than I suppose myself, is uh, the flag, the beautiful rainbow flag, which you can see kind of, I try to like do little these uh, little hash marks all over the board of all the different flags and stuff. And conveniently, the one that's got the most rainbow is right behind my back. Uh, you figure that the fan is enough information there. Um, but so it's interesting, when I was specifically searching for, I guess like, Pride cocktails. There were like a number of lists that I found out there who were just like, here's a bunch of cocktails to celebrate Pride Month with. And uh, some of them made sense. Some of them just didn't look very good. Some of them were just like neon colors. And I was like, ah. Uh. That doesn't really seem like, this doesn't seem very prideful, it just seems very colorful. Now, prideful and colorful don't nece aren't necessarily mutually exclusive, but so th there was just a lot of things that had like very interesting gradients to them, and they were like, yeah, this is pride. This is pride. They're all correct answers in their own right, in their way. So the thing that I'm gonna start off with is the classic Rainbow Paradise cocktail. I call it classic. It's not really classic. It's just a, it's a cocktail that's rainbow. I couldn't find, I was trying to find a cocktail that was the most rainbow and colorful looking thing that 
hopefully, via the methods of layering and whatnot, didn't look like an absolute mess when it all went together. I was doing a little bit of experimentation with it and layering and whatnot last night, so if it works out well, cool. If it doesn't, that's okay. We can make it a metaphor, it'll be great. So the first cocktail that I've got planned for y'all is the Rainbow Paradise Cocktail. This is Rainbow Paradise Cocktail. What's it called? Rainbow Paradise. In itself, it is already a cocktail. There is no need to be naming it twice, it seems. There's just no need for that. So the Rainbow Paradise cocktail I found from a website called hyvee.com. And I'm under the impression, I think Hyvee is like a, a purveyor of certain products and stuff because in the actual description of the recipe, they talk about a specific Hyvee 100% no sugar added pineapple juice. Um, and I think that's supposed to be the yellow part of the rainbow there. I, I don't really know. I don't have any Hyvee pineapple juice. I actually have some leftover pineapple juice from a couple of weeks ago. But it's not bad. Actually, it's even better because it's carbonated and fermented just a little bit. It's basically become this kind of like kind of pre tapache that's been sitting in my refrigerator. We're gonna get there and we're gonna try as best as we can. The Rainbow Paradise cocktail is one that essentially just looks like rainbow. It's beautiful. It's very flaggy. If there was a way to add the other colors of, let's say, the progress flag and like, like your pink and your brown, your black and your white, that would be amazing. Uh, I, if I had like one of those like little, like, um, like little, like, um, not a cocktail umbrella, like a little cocktail flag, and you could put the little, little stripes on it. I probably could have, I probably could have maybe put one together before stream actually happened, but I didn't even think about it until this very moment. And unless you all would like to watch me just kind of very, very uh, carefully create this flag here, uh, which I guess we can, uh, but uh, I won't do it unless somebody specifically asks me to. So the Rainbow Paradise cocktail is essentially three distinct layers. We have a red layer on the bottom, a yellow slash orangey layer in between, and a blue layer up on top. And when you look at it, and it looks like the rainbow. There's a distinct lack of purple there. We're gonna get to that as well. At least I'm gonna try my best to, it seems. What we need to start off with over here is a tall glass. A tall glass like this that is more or less filled with ice, crushed or otherwise. I think, I don't exactly know how long it is going to take me to actually create the layering effect here, uh, but we're gonna try to do it as quickly as possible. So I'm debating whether or not I use just kind of like loose ice cubes and stuff, or whether I use some crushed ice. We're very early on in the stream, so, and I have some new Lewis bags that I bought off the interwebs, and I'm actually really excited to crack some ice. So uh, let's see whether or not um, we can crack, cra uh, crack ice using a Lewis bag properly. Usually I just use cheesecloth, but cheesecloth is, is it's, it's really, really messy. Uh, it doesn't work super duper well in, it, it adheres way too well to the ice cubes. So when you try to pour it into your cocktail glass, it just kind of gets everywhere, kind of knots up like dingleberries. It's really, really weird and it doesn't work very well. So instead we've got this Lewis bag and Lewis bag is a canvas bag that is specifically meant for uh, crushing ice. I'm sure there's other things that you can use a Lewis bag for, like uh, potentially suffocating your pal Lewis. But for the purposes of this stream, I'm going to be taking a couple of ice cubes, a couple of big ones. I think I'll need... I'm going to go for three of them. Better to have more ice than less ice. Ooh, come on. I actually saw this technique the other day where you take... Instead of pushing up like this, you would push down like this. And actually, that worked incredibly well. Wow, both times. It was awesome. I saw a TikTok where somebody did it at a bar, and I was like, man, there's no way the ice comes out that quickly. And lo and behold, it came out pretty quickly. Coming out. It's a metaphor. I love it. So how do we crush ice? It's actually quite simple. Put your ice in a bag that is useful for, cut, uh, for crushing. Um, find safety goggles. I have safety goggles hidden in this bar somewhere. Grab safety Wow, this is incredibly foggy. Wow, it looks like somebody spit syrup all over this thing. We're going for it. Even if we're a dirty kind of pride, we're still kind of pride. Let me go get to, I have a giant wrench down here. I feel like when we're talking about this type of, when we're talking about things that are really important to us, we speak softly and carry a very large stick. In my case, just, uh, I have a very, very large wrench. Um, it is prideful in its own special way. I, I would say that there's probably rainbows on this thing. I mean, technically when you think about the metal crystal structure of iron and steel, if you look down far enough, I'm sure there's a way to like polish it to a rainbow sheen. Not quite titanium coated, but um, anyway, I'm digressing. I just noticed this, check this out. I got this wrench from my family. So it was found at my parents' house. And this wrench uh, evidently says, your finger's here. It is a very, it is a very aggressive type of wrench. Uh, evidently so and uh, make sure just wear your safety goggles my friends so we got our Lewis bag I've got ice inside of this thing there's also a little bit of ice outside of this thing but we're not gonna worry about that this is on the outside and just like 
Just go for it. We're crushing up ice. And then we'll put it in the glass. If we need more ice, uh, we can crush more ice. I've never used this thing before, so here we go. Step one. Uh, I don't know what step we're on. That is working insanely well. That was awesome. This was, oh, nice. And I didn't even make any holes in the bag like I would do with the cheese club. Once upon a time, somebody said that this is the only way to crush ice, and I am totally vibing with that. So long as I don't just, like, knock the glass that I'm using off, then I think we'll be up. Oop, I lost a little bit of ice. Just a little bit. This is the kind of workout that you evidently get as a bartender, but you don't expect to get as a bartender because mostly you think about like, you know, you use like a mallet or something, not something as top heavy as this. I do, that was a little difficult as you may have noticed. I do have a smaller wrench. I just didn't decide to use it today. This is going to be the, the large and potentially uh, interpreted as masculine portion of the cocktail. And then uh, I guess the other like more, uh, I guess more, not as masculine. A little, little more delicate stuff later. I got a bunch of crushed ice in here. Some of them are not that crushed. That's fine. It's crushed nonetheless. Go ahead and put that in your glass. Let's do that. Is If this works better than my cheesecloth, then it was obviously a good spend of money. And lo and behold, that's working pretty well. Yeah! I love that! Who knew it could be this easy? I like that. I, I find it's a little difficult to, to kind of grab in the right way. Let's see. I'd call myself a professional, but that'd be lying. And I'm not about lying to the people. Oh, that was it! Wow, a perfect three ice cubes, perfectly. Awesome. Didn't even plan that. That's great. Coolio! Alright, well, that Lewis bag has served me well. I have another one, but it has fallen, and it cannot get up on its own because it is inanimate. So now that you've filled your glass up with as much crust as, uh, crust, <laughs> as, much crust as you possibly can, crushed ice. Christ. That's what it is. The holy, you know, uh, uh, the gin, the, t uh, let's see, the gin, the Campari, and the sweet vermouth. <laughs> the holy Christ. Negroni. That's how you make a Negroni. In any case, so the first layer that we need to add is the red layer. What is in the red layer? According to my instructions, it is a single ounce of grenadine. That is all it is. A single ounce of grenadine all the way at the bottom. This is a very large glass. It is supposed to contain a total of 12 ounces, which is like... I don't know. Alexa, how many milliliters are in 12 ounces? 355 milliliters. I broke my refrigerator just a little bit. My grenadine is not stored properly. It's like, it's like when you try to shove way too much onto your kitchen door and there's only that little metal bar there and when you put too much into it, the metal bar wants to snap off. It's happened about two times this week. Um, this was the second time. So this is grenadine I made. It's the pomegranate grenadine. It's made with like pomegranate molasses and a little bit of pomegranate juice and some orange blossom water. I was I was actually very self-conscious about this uh, grenadine because I have had this, I, I'm gonna speak totally transparently. This single bottle of grenadine has been in my refrigerator since 2021. And I thought that was a really bad thing. I was like, I really, really need to make more grenadine. Like this thing has to go bad eventually. But evidently, I am not the only one who sins in that particular flavor because I was watching how to drink the other day, and apparently Greg has had the same grenadine that he, this is his recipe anyways, anyways, for also like almost two years in his fridge. And I was like, oh, I feel validated now. I'm not gonna push myself to make all the grenadine again because I don't know where my pomegranate molasses went. I don't think I have it anymore. I can buy it at Giant, but choose not to. So it says that we need to add a single ounce or about 30 milliliters of grenadine. So let's pop that in there. I did mention that 12 ounces is about 350 milliliters evidently, 0.35 liters for those who like to like that. Hmm. Oh, okay. Reading the instructions again, I now see that we are to add the grenadine first and then add the crushed ice. It actually makes a lot of sense. It's a good thing I have a lot more grenadine left over. We're up to a little bit of a slow start here. It's a it's a messy kind of thing. Not every piece of not every piece of who you are is clean at every single moment in your life. It is a metaphor. It totally is. Uh, yeah, that's that's not right. That looks like quite literally a bloody mess. So, uh, being the novice as I am, apparently not thinking things through, we're just gonna 
we we'll start that over. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it all over again. I'm gonna give this glass a little bit of a clean. We're gonna crack some more ice. I'm gonna do it with the smaller wrench this time, and uh, then we'll just continue back where we left off. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. I only have one of these glasses. That's the only reason I'm reusing it. It's a really nice glass. It's hurricane-esque. I have absolutely no idea where I got it. In any case, how's your night starting? You doing? You doing well? You doing well? Have you celebrated this month? Do you? Do you want to celebrate? You don't need to. You don't want to. I celebrated because it was also my fiance's and I's anniversary, our dating anniversary, so that's what I was celebrating, for the most part. But there is never any bad reason to have a good party and to celebrate yourself. Just look in the mirror today and celebrate yourself. That's what it's all about. This glass is very sticky. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm vamping for time. But isn't that beautiful? I'm gonna crush up some more ice. Stay tuned for more. Stay tuned for more aggressive ice cracking action. This time with a smaller wrench, so that I don't hurt my arm as much. Goodness knows my arm has gotten enough work this week. Take that as it may. Okay, I'm gonna get my safety goggles out again. Gonna grab my Lewis bag again. Gonna take the remaining three ice cubes in that mold over there and um, hope we have enough ice cream for, uh, ice cream? Ice cubes for uh, the rest of the cocktails this evening. It's just how it is. Now, if you want a pro bartender move, you take the ice and instead of trying to pop up like this, you pop it down like that. Isn't that cool? It's so easy to do. That one was a little bit more difficult and the ice wants to travel. No ice wants to stay uh, cooped up for too long. It's, uh, that ice wants to see the world. That ice wants to go out and just like, be iceful. Um, take your other wrench. Where does my other wrench? Uh -huh, I found you. And um, try again. This time, maybe being a little more thorough now that you have finer control over the wrench that you're using. You don't have to use a wrench. You could also use a hammer. I don't have a pretty, like, I feel like I have a pretty face when shaking cocktails. I do not have a pretty face when I am crushing up ice. I'm always very angry looking. <sighs> it worked. Now let's do a, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I almost made the same mistake again. Check yourself before you shrek yourself. Remove your goggles. You're not whacking that thing anymore. You're taking a rest because you deserve it, bud. Add a single ounce of grenadine to the bottom of your un-ice crusted glass. That's what you're supposed to do. That's how we're supposed to play this game. My grenadine is notably maroon. It is also red. And maroon's just a kind of a type of red. I found out that one of my coworkers was colorblind the other day. It was awesome. It was really cool. And I did that very classy. I'm not colorblind, so I did the very stereotypical thing of being like, Oh, what color is this? Oh, what color is this? Oh, what color is this? Uh, which is the exact same thing that I did to my father when I found out he was colorblind, too. <laughs> it's not, I'm not exactly proud of it, uh, but I have a very predictable individual, evidently. That piece of me just does not change. Now that there, there is a single ounce, allegedly, of grenadine at the bottom of your glass, it could be pomegranate grenadine, could be roses grenadine, whatever grenadine you popped at the store, so long as it is grenadine. Actually, really, so long as it is red and thick enough that it will stay at the bottom of the glass. That's, that's kind of the key here. We are going to add all of the ice. It says completely fill up the glass with ice. I will not doubt Hy-Vee again. I will not take matters into my own hands. Hy-Vee is more experienced with... Uh, evidently this cocktail than I am. So I'm just gonna take their word for it. I uh, actually think I did a much better job at crushing the ice this time. Yeah, one of the things that I've uh, just kind of come to the conclusion of is uh, I, I realized that the uh, these bar streams are actually like the, uh, the the catalog and the chronicle journeys of somebody trying to teach themselves how to be a mixologist. That's essentially what's happening here. I come, you know, every single week, and I learn a couple new cocktails. I come on stream every once in a while. We learn a new technique. It's fun that we're all learning together. Uh, maybe you're not learning anything. Perhaps you're the professional in your field. In which case, please reach out to me. I'm not knowledgeable. I need your guidance. Next ingredient is we're going to add four ounces of high V, 100% no sugar added pineapple juice and coconut flavored rum. We're gonna combine the two together for a total of six ounces. That's gonna take up the majority of this cocktail. I don't have high V, 100%, no sugar added pineapple juice. I have the real stuff. So I'm gonna grab the real stuff, because that's what I have. It's been sitting in my refrigerator for also a little too long. And uh, my refrigerator is broken right now, and my uh, rose water just decided to try to come out for a spell too. 
I might need to fix that in a little bit, but don't worry about it. I have this cryptic container, which looks like it may have once contained sake because it used to, of... I guarantee it says fresh pineapple on it. I guarantee that. It is pineapple juice. It is supposed to be really, really yellow. It is not really, really yellow. So I'm inclined for the per- I'm gonna see how yellow this actually looks when we pour it into, uh, into the glass. And if it's just not the same potency of yellow, we can add something else to it to see if we can try to make it a little bit more yellow. I have like food dye, so I think that's probably going to work. I think what I'll do in the interim, because I don't know if the color is gonna be just right, is I'm gonna kind of grab like an interim glass in the meantime, because when you're trying to do- I guess when you're trying to do a presentation cocktail like this, you want to try to get it on the like the color on the nose as best as possible, and um, I only did a little bit of experimentation in ahead of the stream, so we all get to explore together. So in total, we're gonna need four ounces or like 118 milliliters of I think I'm doing that right. 118 milliliters of our pineapple juice. That's gonna be like the majority of this particular layer. This is layer number two. There's supposed to be three of them. It's supposed to look very rainbow like. Oh, it smells awesome. And it had a little fizz when I took off the cap. That's how you know. That's how you know. Um, this is grenadine on the bottom. So it's just going to get grenadine on, my, on the bar mat. It's okay. That's why we have a bar mat. I would say I tasted a little bit this of this last night. And this pineapple juice, because it's been sitting for a hot minute, has fermented a little bit. It's most definitely carbonated. And uh, it tastes awesome. It is so... No, let me... It's basically bubbly. It's like, it's not as potent. It's not as potent, slightly bubbly pineapple juice. And it tastes awesome. Like I left this in the fridge for a week by accident and I was like, oh no, the glass bottle's gonna explode. It did not. It's so tasty. It is such a, it is a great ingredient. Now you can actually create a, a beverage called tapache. And tapache is made by taking the remnants of a pineapple, put it in some water, add a little bit of spices and whatnot. You can use vanilla, you can use cinnamon, you can use clove, put that in there with a bit of sugar, brown sugar if you have it. And then over time, everything will dissolve, it'll start to ferment, it'll kind of froth up a little bit, and you will have this drink known as tapache. The history behind it, I don't really know. That's beyond my area of expertise. But it tastes delicious and can sometimes taste like formaldehyde if you're not careful, but according to at least one thread, on r slash brewers that is totally normal it just isn't the best way to impress your friends my friends would be a lot more impressed by this pineapple juice which inadvertently became carbonated specifically by my own accident it does not smell like formaldehyde it tastes really good now um i think i added two full i definitely added two full ounces or three four full ounces i forgot where it was we also need two full ounces or about 59 milliliters of coconut rum Coconut flavored rum. Yeah, got Malibu, dude. Malibu's like the only coconut rum that I have in my collection and probably the only one that's worth mentioning, at least to my knowledge. I'm actually, I take that back. I am not an authority on this. I'm sure there are much better coconut rums out there other than Malibu. This is the one that's most available. You can tell it's most available. This is a plastic bottle. And um, sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes that's a bad thing. I was at the store yesterday and realized that I didn't have any scotch in my collection, and to be perfectly honest, um, I went for the plastic bottle one because I am a heathen, and I'm happy to be the heathen that I am. So what we can see right here, and I'll put it up on the cocktail cam in the huts in a, in a moment over here, this is the kind of the, the yellow portion of the drink, and I'm not super duper enthused by it. This When I think of like the yellow portion of this drink, I'm thinking that like it's supposed to be like almost a urine level yellow. So, and it's not quite there yet. I want it to be a little more potently yellow. I don't have anything in my collection over here that is super duper yellow aside from like whiskeys and whatnot. Uh, I don't think it would affect the flavor super duper much. I just don't have anything that here that's super duper yellowy, except for like things that are orange. But orange could possibly work. So I think actually what I'm gonna do is because we already have coconut rum in there, which clocks in at 21% alcohol by volume at 42 proof. I'm gonna look and see if there's something in here that's kind of around that level. Let's see, I've got this, I've got this amaretto that's 24%, so about 48 proof. And I wonder if by adding a little bit of the orange, or maybe a bit more of the orange, that it's going to kind of bring that yellow color on a little bit more. It's going to be a bit more liquid than we had originally intended it to be. But for the sake of color, I think this might be pretty good. So uh, let's see, let's see how this works. I'm going to try to put this on the, uh, the cocktail camera over here and see whether or not we can kind of get this color to match like, I don't know, maybe we can get it like yellow to the to matching the uh, the yellow of my little pan flag vest that i put together i'm gonna add i don't even really need to do the cooking by the book here i'll add like a little bit what is a little bit i don't really know there's a little bit swirl it around a little bit see if that made a ah. 
That's not super duper potent. I'm gonna take the cop out. I don't have anything that's super duper yellow. I'm gonna take the chances of it. I do have yellow food bag. So we're just gonna use that. It's got a, I, I will admit, this yellow, this yellow food dye that I had that I just kind of bought from Whole Foods, it does have a certain flavor to it. It really does. Um, so it gonna, it's gonna affect, it's gonna make things slightly sweeter and change it up a little bit. And I'm just gonna add a bit, a couple of drops of that. And we're gonna just give it a little bit of a stir. Just get that yellow color. Oh, yep, that looks like absolute urine now. Yep. That totally works. Oh my God. And it tastes like Malibu and I love it. Let's bring the cocktail angle actually over here a little bit so we can get a view of these layers beginning to kind of coalesce within each other. There's gonna be another one that goes up on top, um, but we'll see how this one goes. So let's see that. We can see a bottle of Malibu and we can see a frosty, frosty looking glass. And since all we're gonna do is we're just gonna pour this in on top, right? Combine pineapple juice and coconut rum in the measuring glass. Slowly pour the mixture over ice in a glass. So I'm gonna do this slowly and see if it gets that layering effect that we're uh, oh so craving. I have to do it a little bit faster because evidently this container sucks at pouring. It is absolutely doing that thing that we were hoping it to do. Wonderful. And I'm actually gonna not, I'm not gonna go super duper far up because I know that we have another layer and I would like love the color blue, it's my favorite color. So I'm gonna keep it there. I'll keep, um, let's see. That tastes so good! It's barely alcoholic, I guess. I don't really know. That's good. Switch things back and we have one final layer and that is supposed to be blue curacao up on top. Um, I tried that last night. I, I tried very much so. I feel like sometimes I, I've noticed when I try to find cocktails that are specifically layered, I sometimes feel that perhaps there wasn't enough research done on the densities that you're using. There are some blue curacaos out there that are going to be a different alcohol percentage than other blue curacaos to the point where maybe they will sit on top of the glass. Density wise, we want to have something that's more alcoholic or just just less dense in general than some combination of pineapple juice and a 42% Maybe a little bit higher proof liquid And like the, the thing that comes to mind if I wanted to float up on top I'm gonna to go for like some sort of base spirit and when I was thinking to myself like what kind of base spirit could we use? Two things came to mind the original recipe obviously calls for some blue curacao mix it with some water I tried that I could not get it to work. It sank straight to the bottom of the glass. It might be a little bit different here because we have the, actually we have, I'm trying to think, because we have ice in between, so that might actually help with it. I want to doubt, but I'm a little scared. So we're gonna go with something else. I'm gonna do a little like a split thing here. I have this blue raspberry moonshine, which is a lovely blue color and it tastes amazing. And I also freshly infused some butterfly pea flower gin the other night. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of split the two things together and see if we can get a nice blue color. I'm gonna do like one ounce of one and one ounce of the other and see if we can fill that thing up to the top. I'll grab another like uh, intermediate glass in the meantime so we can check that color as we're, as we're mixing it. So that's what we'll do. I have this one, right? I'm gonna take, let's put this down a little bit, pop this puppy down so we can watch the colors. Watch the colors in action. Hello, measuring majigger. I have my glass here, here. We have, whoa, a falling, a falling measurer. That's funny. Rye says, Cameroon! I said, hello, Rye. Uh, hello. How are you this fine, wonderful evening? Welcome, take a seat, or don't take a seat. There's standing room. Not standing room only, as I will say. I'm going to take a single ounce, about 30 milliliters, of our blue raspberry liqueur. It tastes and smells awesome. It's a nice blue color, but it's not blue enough for me. I'm going to also go with, let's do a half an ounce. A half an ounce, about 15 milliliters, of our freshly infused uh, butterfly pea flower gin, which gave this a really cool purple color. I'm down with that. I'll take it. Ray! Welcome back. Oh, that's what Anna said. I'm fantastic, says Ray. I have a half day of work tomorrow. I'm gonna head out of town Friday for a four day weekend. Dude, I had my five day weekend. Nope, it was also a four day weekend last weekend. It was awesome. It's because Anna graduated. Dude, I'm dating a doctor now. Awesome! It's so cool. I love it. And then I'll eventually be married to the doctor. It's gonna be great. All right, so I have our blue layer here. I am assuming, based off of the laws of density and the uh, other things that I've learned from my high school physics class, that this is gonna look pretty good. So we're gonna see if this looks pretty good. I hope it looks pretty good, or at least like, mildly okay. 
I'm gonna agitate the ice a little bit. If I have a little bit extra ice in my Lewis bag, I think I'll kind of, I'm going to top it off just a tad because uh, we've kind of lost a little bit. I, whoa, I talked too much. Didn't get it in there. Okay, well, there's ice in the bar. Ice on my wrist. Ice on my bar. One is cold. One's non-existent. Let's do this. It's going to be a little more purple now that I think about it because the butterfly pea flower really is purple. But uh, I think it's going to look cool anyway. Yeah, dude! Yeah! It's not as potently blue as you may expect it to be, but it's great, and I love it. Let me back that up just a hot second. There we go. Oh, pfft, get out of here, you. Get out of here, ruin our shot over here. Put this blue smoky away, I'll put my gin away, I'll put my uh, experimental glasses away, put the measuring majigger down there, put that spoon back over here. Wow, I love it. You should use a spoon to layer. I could have, but I didn't. And it actually worked out a little bit well. That's actually kind of cool. So there's one other thing that we want to do with this, and we're just going to garnish it with a little orange wheel. So uh, allow me to real quick grab myself this, grab myself that, grab myself... Ooh. He says brandishing a knife. Well, one of these. And I'm just going to cut off a little orange wheel. There we go. That's one half of the orange uh, sacrificed, and there's the other half of the orange. I am going to, as best as I possibly can, sacrifice. put this on the side of the grass. It's kind of a sacrifice. There's going to be a little bit of overflow here because there's a lot of stuff in this glass. So let me try my best. This here we go. Oh, here we go. It's going to spill. It's going to spill, but that's all right. Go for it. Oh my god, it didn't spill. I had so little faith. Me, me of so little faith. Wow, look at that. That's awesome. Uh, I don't have space to put my cutting board back. Yes, I do. I made space for it. All right, let me back this up a hot second. So I will admit, as far as my reference for the Paradise Rainbow Paradise cocktail, which is this, can you see that? Yeah, we can. This is my reference. This is my cocktail. It is not as potently blue on the top as I thought it would be. It is yellow, which is great. It's got the grenadine. My grenadine is super duper red. It's a, such a deep red that uh, it's not as, you know, this would probably be more properly executed by somebody who experimented a little bit more. But lo and behold, it has a layer of blue, it has a layer of yellow, and it has a layer of red. And you know what? I think that's something that I can be proud of. Oh, and I- It's an emo plan, it's pan an, flag. It's an emo pan flag? <laughs> I like it. And, uh, it also feels appropriate to put a, a metallic flag or a metallic um, straw in it. There we go. Isn't that wonderful? It looks great. That's some Dracula red. It is very. It is a very, very bloody it's very red color. Emo. It's very, very emo. I'm gonna say like this is. Let's see. Is this more similar to one of the other flags on the board? It kind of matches the uh, the yellow that we see in like the uh, kind of. A gender and non-binary flag. They, at least the way that I drew them on my board, they look similar. I do not represent the full color wheel of the LGBTQIA plus spectrum. I have a limited number of markers, and that limited number of markers fits conveniently, but also not so conveniently in this box of 30 Chocola markers. Definitely not. I know. What are you doing? I'm watching you. You're hanging, you're hanging off stream. That's yeah. so funny. She's not wearing pants right now. You're just gonna have to believe me. It's a good thing that we're not on the cocktail angle, I'm which uh, I'm sure she's... Shorts. Oh, okay. Sure, sure. Absolutely. She's wearing... She is fully clothed. To the horn dogs out there, my future wife is fully clothed. Cameron! I'm wearing booty shorts. Calm your booty now. Let me take a picture of this real quick. No! Oh, I don't know who no. I was no. I don't know who we were talking to last stream about the weird, like, kind of... The weird, like, uh, effect that my camera was having uh, when I was trying to take pictures. Evidently, there's a macro lens mode with the Google Pixel 7 Pro camera, and I found out how to that specifically con awesome control that. I do not remember who it was. Oh, no! Break it? No, but my orange doesn't want to stay in place. Oh my god, Should please I... stay in place. Not... Stay in place. Stay in place. I got you. I got I you. you Rapid photo succession. We did it. It worked. Yeah, uh, Ryan was the one who told me about that. Yeah, it was like it was a macro lens thing, evidently. There is an auto macro mode about that. And I think that's I'm pretty sure that's what you said. Um and so I did a little bit of searching beforehand because I was like, this gets so annoying. It's mostly like I think there's a particular distance that it starts activating at. You're being a problem, dude. I'm gonna eat you. I'm gonna disembowel you. Vor maybe is prideful. I don't really know. 
Mm. It's so cold. Oh my god. Me disavowing an orange peel. That's the cold. That's the cold part. Oh my god, it tastes so good. There is a little bit. There is a actually there's a lot of bit of that blue raspberry flavor in this orange peel. It tastes so good. Excuse me. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat this a little bit later. We have we have a cocktail to worry about. So what have we learned? You can layer these things on top of each other. I'm actually what I'm gonna try to do is I want to see if I can make it a little bit more blue. I have this blue curacao syrup down here somewhere. I'm just gonna see. I'm just gonna see whether or not that works the way that I think it does. If it does, maybe we update the picture a little bit. Yeah, that's just nah, nah. That's not working at all. Actually, this is really cool looking. Check it out. Wait, 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 come back, come back. Check it out. It's like... It's meandering all the way down. That is really cool looking. Uh, but it, it, of course, it sinks right to the bottom. It's, you know, it's it's down there. It's a syrup. It's not gonna, it's not gonna look any better. It is a very, very thick syrup, and it's just gonna go to the bottom of the glass. I like... There is a certain... There, there is a certain way to, like, layer cream liqueurs on top of other things. I don't know how that works. Like, my mind, conceptually, for some reason, can't put the pieces together of why cream would float on top of some liqueurs. L liqueur is alcohol. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. And I've tried it multiple times, and it just looks weird every single time. Rai says, you should make a hanky code cocktail. A hanky code cocktail? What is a hanky code? Oh, hanky code, like the handkerchief code. As if, like, actually... <laughs> This is funny. I was doing a little bit of research, on that, or I did a very, very preliminary piece of research on that the other day because one of the people that, I, uh, somebody that I know in my life um, was walking around with a black handkerchief in their pocket. And it was like the beginning, it was like the beginning of the month. So a piece of me was like, is this supposed to be a sign? I wonder if this is supposed to be a sign. So I Googled the hanky code and what the color black means. And if I was reading it correctly, black means bottom. I think it is either I think it's but like a you're you're a bottom as opposed to being a top that or it's something worse than that I can't quite remember worse I say there's nothing bad about being a bottom this drink has turned green let's let's drink it and see what happens if I drink it for the bottom it's gonna taste like grenadine that's disgusting if I drink it for the middle That's absolutely freaking delightful. Oh my god. So yeah, the bottom just tastes like grenadine. Tastes like pomegranate. A little bit of cherry notes in there. Um, it's great. The grenadine tastes awesome. There's a little bit of curacao note in there because it did kind of dribble its way into there. Um, in the middle, we have something that tastes like coconut rum because it is. It's slightly sweeter. It's definitely sweeter than I anticipated. And it's got a bubbly note to it because of the way that the, that fermented, slightly fermented by accident pineapple juices work in there. It's awesome. And it's delicious. The top layer, if I sip it from the top, tastes like blue raspberry. I had not mixed any of the butterfly pea flower gin and that blue raspberry moonshine before, but it just kind of tastes like the blue raspberry moonshine with this more floral botanical aspect to it. I'm getting like, it's not super duper bitter. This, maybe everything that's going on here, I like can't taste any of the bitterness here, except for maybe like a tinge of it in the tartness that's coming through on that blue raspberry, but it's all really good. I think now what I'm obviously curious about is seeing if I mix this thing together and see what happens. But Rice says, I did my 11th grade social studies fair project all about the hanky code. The judges in my small southern military town clothed their pearls. Clothed their pearls. I was so proud of myself. That's so great. We love to see people making an impact on their local community, even when their local community is not quite prepared for it. Hello. Hello, Harry. How are you, Harry Dad? That was way back in the 90s. I wonder if you tried doing that nowadays. Whoever's still in school, here's a school project idea. The hanky code. And go into full details. I'm talking, give every spe specific, explicit, sexual detail of all that means. Harry says, hello, Amron. Oh, I see what we're doing here. Hello, Ari. Ow. Re. Ooh. 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 Ooing. Today. Unites, unites, unites. Hats, hot, hats, hat. Mmm, alking, all alking, bout. Anyway, octails. Mmm, 
Actually, that's not too bad when it's all combined together. That's pretty good. The color, because we're being thorough about this, looks very green. This is... This reminds me of the asphalt. This remind, This reminds me of a very, very wet and mucky and marshy day at my parents' house. Let's picture it this way. The road at my parents' house is up here, and it dips down to where the actual house is. There's a lot of green in between. It's beautiful, but on rainy, rainy days, the runoff from the road seeps down into the grass and sometimes takes pieces of the grass with it, and there would be puddles that it would form in the front yard that I'd jump around in as a kid, and it reminds me of that. It does not taste like that. Yes, I did taste it once upon a time. I was a very weird child, and it tastes nothing like this cocktail, which is very, very fruity. It is very, very forward in sugariness, and it kind of tastes like the tartness of the blue raspberry, so it's slightly tart, but mostly tastes kind of like, I think, like coconut. There's definitely coconut in there. But there's also this orangey component. I, it's not It's not quite orangey. I'm trying to think of what fruit I think it tastes like most of all. I think it's like, it's mostly the pomegranate, pomegranate coconut. Because the grenadine has a really powerful and sweet flavor. The coconut is very prevalent. And like the pineapple juice just kind of like melds in with that blue raspberry tartness. Overall, um, it does not taste green. It's not very pretty looking anymore once you like mix the layers together. But unlike, like, unlike, unlike a layered shot, I can't just take this and be done with it. This is an entire endeavor. But again, it's a metaphor. We can't all look our best every single time of the day. And if you imagine each point in my life represented by a different cocktail we've made, you can tell that I've had a lot of ups and downs. It was, Rice says, it went from a rasbo paradise to a southern decadence. Harry says, what's the weather like? Southern decadence, Rice saying, a gay version of Mardi Gras in New Orleans that is totally not safe for work. I didn't know about that at all. Southern decadence. It's green and it's disgusting. What's the weather like? It's it's rainy. It was rainy today. Not super duper rainy, but like kind of drizzly. I took an umbrella to work and really didn't have to use it, but I did get a little wet on the way home for reasons I will not share. It was raining. That's the reason. I lied to you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Honestly, it's pretty good. I would say like this feels like, at least for me, if I got a cocktail that tasted like this, I'd be like, cool. But only if I, it tastes, uh, you know, let, let me, I'm not gonna do the criticism stuff. It tastes good. It's fruity, it's tart, just, but it's a slightly tart. It's much more sweet than it is tart, and that's a flavor that I can get behind. I like it. And no, that is not supposed to be a hanky coat joke, but it certainly can be interpreted as such. Rai says, oh, never mind, he, I read that already. I get confused sometimes. Chat is up here now, but y'all see it down here, but I also see it over there. But over there, I can't read it, but I can see when new messages come through. Up here, I can read it, but it's a little blinding and I could angle my thing a little bit, but te technical details. That was our rainbow paradise. And uh, like what happens uh, when rainbows happen, I guess the, the air is humid. It's wet, it's crystally. It might be raining somewhere. Anyway. That's your, that's your cocktail. And like all things, after the glitz and glamour of the days that we go out and whatnot, uh, we come back and we clean ourselves up. Uh, at least that's, maybe, maybe that's the implication being had here. This is, this is nice. And it's sweet. Now we'll move on to another cocktail because I think I can only have, there is a certain amount of sweetness that I can take in my life. And I think that's pretty much all the sweetness that I need for this evening. Although I think we've got some other drinks coming up that will also help us with that fact. Rice said, LOL, there's a cocktail called Freudian Slip. If not, there should be. Is there a cocktail called Freudian Slip? <laughs> I was going to say a phallic word like penis, but I decided not to. What's the next cocktail? What else? Do we, what do we have in the rest of this pride stream over here? Well, let's see. The other things that I have prepared for this evening go in one of two different directions. Either we take thing, we, we uh, start with cocktails that are kind of like queer, gay related. Or, these are cocktails that are created by cocktail creators who I know are prideful in some way, shape, or form. I know I have at least two of them prepared, and uh, I like the both of them. I found one of them relatively recently, and I listened to a podcast starring one the other day. That's the, that's the two directions that I think we can go. Either, either something that is traditionally more gay community, or one that is from the community at large. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup up here because this one got really, really sticky. But if you have any thoughts on where we should go next... Let me know. Actually, you know what I can do? I have more fine control over things now. And I think that's what we're going to do. Polls are going to interact, ask them questions. I'm going to do a poll because I didn't know that I could do that. Question is, which cocktail next? Question. I've never done this before, so I'm going to give it a try. Gay related 
I say, let's do, let's do pride related. Pride related. Pride. I'm trying to type. This keyboard is really bad. Related. I'm also very bad. And prideful drinks by prideful people. The backspace is tiny. Oh, I can't make it. I, I can't make prideful drinks by prideful people a thing. So you get prideful drinks by prideful. Uh, allow additional votes? I, I don't really know. How long have we got? It's not going to take me more than two minutes to start this thing up, so let's do it. Uh, poll management. Uh, can I just exit out of this now? I've never done this before, so let's see. Pride related or pride created? That would have been so good! Um, it's a shame I didn't read that earlier. Um, yeah. Um, what Rai said. This is this bar is really sticky. Please let me clean up for a moment. This is actually nice. Maybe I do these poll things a little more often. Because that way, like, you know, we can, like, breathe for a moment. This is your this is your time to hydrate. I have this really large water bottle now uh, that holds a lot of water because I don't like getting up from my desk. Um, the issue with it is the fact that um, it, it's like it requires a disproportionate amount of sucking power to get the water that I want. And the point is for me not to feel like I can drink less water. It's to drink more water. So it's kind of kind of doesn't really work in the way that I want it to. Um, but we have it nonetheless. All right. And how about appropriate? And how appropriate? A poll for pride. I'm so naughty. Get it? The structural support beam. There was one of those in my fraternity house. Totally not a stripper poll. Or a poll for pole dancing. Totally not either of those. If you know, you know. Uh, let me erase this off the board, because we're going to go to something next. Great. Um, I now feel like I have to wait until the end of the poll. That's funny. Ah, ha, ha, ha. That's great. We love user interaction. I like user interaction. Any more ideas on how to be more interactive with the user? How can Streamer Boy interact with you more? How are you? How are you? How's your day? What's your favorite color? Are you gay? Are you not? That's okay anyways! I don't really know what questions to ask people. As you know, I'm incredibly socially awkward. What's the poll say? I don't know. The poll actually doesn't appear on screen anywhere. I'm just kind of uh, referring it nothing. Which cocktail next? Current next. I have two for prideful drinks by prideful. And it's done. Prideful drinks by prideful. Prideful drinks by prideful people. So that's where we're going to go next. The cocktails that I'm going to cover now, going into the next kind of little section of our cocktails here, are two cocktails that I curated from people who I've seen out in the cocktail community who I also know are very, they're openly, they're openly gay or they're openly like with a partner of same sex or otherwise. And I think it's, 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 it's um, whoa. I think it's awesome. I personally am not in that kind of relationship because I fell in love with a person who identifies as female, which is fine and it's great. But I love these two individuals. I think the the first, uh, I'll, in case, now we're just gonna go for it. We're just gonna jump right into it. So the first cocktail that I have is one called the Brazilian Mojito. And the Brazilian Mojito is made by a cocktail creator known as Mike Vanderhorn. He goes by Cocktail Complex on Instagram, cocktail.complex. It's, I would say, I, I love the drinks that he makes. I think if there is a single individual out there who I have been like more, who I've been more inspired by, by just in the Instagram world of like cocktail creation, like cocktail like photography and stuff, it's this guy. I listened to a podcast by him the other day, or not by him, he was guesting, guest starring on a podcast called The Modern Bar Cart, where he was talking about his journey from home mixologist up to, he's now the head bartender at a, at a bar down in South Jersey. Uh, I've been seeing his, I, I didn't, I didn't didn't like really know the personality to the face behind the cocktail camera for a while but when I discovered like the association as sometimes people do on the internet because we're all basically anonymous faces out here I was like wow I love your work I think you're really cool and I aspire to kind of do the stuff you do so I actually because of because of what I've seen him do on Instagram and the kind of talks that that the talk that he gave I was inspired to enter a, cock, a couple of cocktail competitions and be feel a little more confident in my craft as I'm kind of getting it going up and making the next levels in my own personal crafting mixology career so for that i want to thank him with keep creating one of his cocktails because it looks like it's really really good this cocktail is called the brazilian mojito and we'll get right into it in just a moment i would also like to say that 
It's possible, it's possible, maybe not specifically, but it's possible that the Brazilian part of the Brazilian mojito may be referring to a certain thing that you have done to your body to make sure that your asshole doesn't have hair around it. Possibly, I don't really know. Or it could just be referring to the uh, a place called Brazil. I I've never heard of it, honestly. Rai says, spaghetti is straight until you get it wet. Haha, <laughs> winky face. Please tell me this is made in a tall and skinny glass. You will be happy to know this is made in a tall and skinny glass. Any case, specifically the one I'm going to use is going to be this one. So the Brazilian mojito is uh this is so one of the things that i really like about uh mike's work is i was inspired seeing his post before i really knew who he was to create my own little cocktail blog which i have on our discord server and every single cocktail you see this evening is going to have a picture associated with it it's going to have a recipe associated with it with proper credits and whatnot associated and a little blurb of text about my thoughts on it maybe how it tastes or things that i thought of while making the cocktail and i was kind of inspired by some of the stuff that i was seeing on instagram specifically from his account so this is what you would be able to find i will specifically link the individual Instagram post in the description of the VOD that comes out after this, as well as in the Discord server as well. But Mike says, it's clear ice week when this was posted, and he's been working to improve his carving game. If this is the best ice beer, the one pictured in the photo, that and the uh, to, to date, it was the perfect size for the glass, and it's pretty darn clear. Through it, I noticed my spears in clear, throughout it, I noticed my spears in clear drinks are made more visible, especially in bright lighting. Tips? Anyway, this simple mojito riff comes from the place of shame. Haven't had white rum on my bar cart in months, but we all get caught up in certain things like mezcal and amari, and suddenly you want a mojito and you don't have the key ingredient. However, Le Blanc Cachaca to the rescue, and it is in, in a big way. This was better than your standard mojito, considered going, considered going a full two I'd like to say, I did not transcribe this properly, so all the weird like stutters and stuff is totally on me. Um, with a Ray and Nephew, uh, which is the type of overproof rum that I use, but saw my favorite Brazilian spirit and said, hmm, this'll do just fine. With a slightly funky overproof rum and gas, plain old simple syrup, this drink shined brighter than my stupid softbox. It was perfectly delicious and a testament to a tenant of cocktails struggling to accept simple is beautiful. Not that complexity can't be, but the clean crispiness of this modified drink was exactly what he had wanted and needed. Cheers to not naming this a caipirito and my first shots with a DSLR. The cocktail photography camera. It doesn't do it justice, uh, but uh, uh, the photo that I have, it will be linked in the Instagram post. Um, not mine, his. I'll link to it. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, but yeah, I had a thought during that and I cannot remember what that was. I think the only the only thing that I'm subbing out for this one is I, for the life of me, could not find an overproof white rum uh, before the stream happened today. I was really, really trying. I went to the store and I was like, I want to find Ray and Nephew. Could not find Ray and Nephew in my local fine one in good spirits. I was like, fine, I'll set it with any white Oprah proof rum. It doesn't even have to be Ray and Nephew for that funky feeling. I couldn't get that either. I literally could not find it anywhere. So I'm settling for just Bacardi this time. But as but in the description that Mike gives, I'm more inclined to feel not so bad about it because evidently simple can be appreciable. So that's what we're going with. I think the Brazilian spirit in this case, though, is the star of the show, which happens to be this LeBlanc Cachaca, which I have had in my collection for quite a while now, and I'm always looking for more ways to use it, because it's Cachaca. And the only cocktail I know how to make with uh, use Cachaca for is a Caipirinha. This one, specifically, is from Brazil. That's why it's a Brazilian mojito, because instead of using just the rum, we are also using the Cachaca as well, which is from... No, not your backside. Brazil, the country. I think Brazil is a country. I'm bad with geography. And anyways, how do we get this thing started? So what we need to do is we're gonna add mint leaves to a shaker with syrup and muddle. Add remaining ingredients except for the soda water and shake it, and then double strain uh, over a clear ice sphere if we have it. I do not have clear ice spheres. I do not have clear ice. It's unfortunate. But I do have these little ice cubes that I'm gonna stack on top of each other and just kinda do my best to uh, um, fake it until I make it one day. But for the, uh, for the stirring part of this, we need to get ourselves a cocktail shaker. So let's get ourselves a cocktail shaker. In one side, I'm gonna put a couple of ice cubes, and then the other side, I'm gonna put some mint leaves. Um, I kicked my vodka to the ground. I kicked my vodka to the ground! Where's my mint? I need you. I need some simple syrup. I also need... Was that it? Oh, I need ice. Duh. This is my mint. This is my simple. This is cachaca. Where is my ice? I don't know! <laughs> if you tell me where your ice is, I'll tell you where my water is. That doesn't sound... That doesn't sound right when used in the context that I'm using it. 
Let's scratch that from the record. Or actually, screw it. Somebody clipped that. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Adding a couple of ice cubes as well. I have some other small cubes that we will add to the glass afterwards, right before we're ready to pour. There's something to be said about dilution and stuff here, but I don't know what it is. First, what we're going to do is we're going to take our mint leaves. It says here that we could very well use eight specific mint leaves. I'm just going to I'm just going to put in mint leaves until I feel until I feel comfortable stopping. So uh, here we go, mint leaves. I've put about you know like five or so in there so far. This is a spare stem. I put it in the bucket. Taylor's having a uh, um, a face full of mint leaves this evening. I don't think there's anything more grand than that. I think it's beautiful. What else have we got? There we go. I think I would put... I, I would say... I would say, as I said specifically, well, uh, we'll see that there's like at least eight in there. Next, we're going to add our simple syrup. We're going to need to add three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of simple syrup. Ding! I did that by accident. And for some reason, this measuring majigger is still wet for some reason. <laughs> Sexy. Three quarters of an ounce, or about 22 milliliters of that syrup, we're going to put in the same side of our shaker that we put our mint. I specifically put it in another side of the glass than the ice, uh, specifically because I want the ice to start diluting, and I want to be able to muddle the mint and the simple syrup together on the other side of it, and uh, not make things, you know, weird, I suppose. I'm going to grab myself a muddler, and I'm going to catch it in the air because I think I'm cool or something, and we're just going to give it a muddle. Doesn't need to be super duper crazy. Doesn't need to be super duper fancy. Sometimes all we want to do is muddle and or macerate pieces of leaves. Actually, speaking of mint leaves, this is actually super cool. My, when we were celebrating Father's Day over the weekend, uh, we had uh, my parents up here uh, in Philadelphia and evidently up near our area, there is a pick your own garden. I was like, we walked into it because we wanted to uh, go to one of the local gardens and lo and behold, we walked in and they were like, here is our herb garden. Here is our Keats tree. Here is our uh, our blackberry bush, and you can take it. Just like you know, don't be a dick about it. And I was like, this is so cool. So I, I you know, I uh, I as my um, as some members of my family were going around, just kind of walking through the park and stuff. I got down on my knees and I got into the dirt and I was like, what is this? What is this? I'm gonna put this in my mouth because it said that everything was allowed to be put into your mouth. So I was putting a lot of things in my mouth. I found this interesting berry that was kind of sour but also kind of sweet called the Josta berry. It's a very minty, simple syrup. I like that. Nice. Um, let's see. The Joseph area was pretty good. Um, I found some mint. Uh, I found some chocolate mint. And I had some, found some spearmint. I also found some lemon verbena as well. Ooh, it was so good. I loved it very much so. So the next thing that we're going to add is the rest of our ingredients aside from our club soda. The last cocktail stream that we had, there was a cocktail that specifically said that we were going to put the club soda into the shaker with the rest of the stuff, and it was an absolute freaking mess. I, if there's a proper way to do it, I don't know what it is, uh, but we made a little bit of a mess, and it was fun, and we learned a little bit from there. What's the takeaway? Put club soda in your glass, in, the, in your shaker. It'll be a really fun time. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. We're also going to add half an ounce of, I want to use Ray and Nephew, but I don't have it. I wanted to use Overproof Right Rum, but I don't have it. So I'm just going to go for something that is as close as possible to that funky-ish Overproof nature. If I have enough Gosling's 151, which I do, and I will go back down there for that in a moment. I think what I'm trying to go for is if it's called for overproof, I want to keep that bite from the alcohol and as close to funky as I can find, it's a black rum. That's that's just the closest that I have. Unless I kind of split the base with something a little more uh, funky in my opinion, such as like an Appleton Estate. But again, that's gonna like, the color is gonna be a little weird, but like, eh. It's fine. I'm not even using the clear eyes, so I don't think I should beat myself up about it. I have to lower my standards and not put as much pressure on myself. This is a lesson we can all learn from each other. So lime juice. That's what he said he was doing. Lime juice. I got a little cutting board, and I got some limes. We got some limes from earlier. It's great. We're going to give those a cut, and then we're going to give them a squeeze. If we have enough, then great. Otherwise, we're going to have to take uh, one, of its, uh, one of its family members. We're cutthroat on this stream. Don't play games. Actually, I guess we do play games. I, I have been caught for playing video games on Twitch. It just kind of, it does work that way. All right. 
One side of the lime yields for us a little less than a half an ounce, a little less than 15 milliliters. The other half of the lime, if we squeeze it more or less all the way, brings us pretty much right up to that three quarters of an ounce mark. Actually, a little bit over. There is a little bit left of that lime to give. Great. Oh, don't go anywhere, Orange. I should get a bigger cutting board. I really should. I don't have it, though. I just don't. Back you go to the side table. It's all the space that I've got around here. And now we're going to add three quarters of an ounce, or about 22 milliliters, to the other side of our glass, which ha now has muddled mint and some simple syrup in it. Next, we're going to add a half an ounce of some quasi-equivalent of Ray and Nephew white overproof rum. I do not have Ray and Nephew, and the only overproof rum that I have is Gosling's 151. So because I'm trying to conserve the bite of the overproof rum, I'm going to use this guy. You could also possibly split the base, but I think I've screwed around with this enough, so I'm just gonna keep with where I am here. Also, I'd like a, I guess I'm doing quite a good number on this 151 rum, that's fine. Half an ounce, or about 15 milliliters, we're going to add to our cocktail shaker. Instead of coming out crystal clear, uh, like it would have if I used cl 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 whoa, clear ice and um, white overproof rum, it is going to come out looking a little darker. Love comes in all shapes, sizes, and shades. What else am I missing? Oh, I also need an ounce and a half of cachaça. That's about 44 milliliters, and this stuff is awesome. I am so, I was so happy when I saw that this one called out specifically for LeBlanc, because I was like, yes, I have specifically this Brazilian cachaça. I was so happy with that. It smells like funky bananas, and I just, God, I love the way this smells. <sighs> I'm not an alcoholic, only on Wednesdays. Instead of, ca catch me instead of uh, scratching and sniffing the cards in the Hallmark or uh, taking out the tops of the candles in the Yankee Candle Store. <laughs> they'll be, they'll be uh, um, calmly escorting me out of the liquor store as I'm opening up the bottles and smelling all the fragrant liqueurs. Like, sir, you can't stick your bottle... Uh, you, oh, sorry. Sir, you can't keep sticking your finger and nose into the cognacs and the scotches. It's like, but I love it. Apparently, at liquor stores, if you sniff it, you buy it. If you finger it, you also buy it, too. That just feels like an unspoken rule that, in case you need to be reminded, don't stick your fingers in the bottle at the liquor store. They're gonna make you purchase it, probably. And with that, we have our mint leaves, we have our simple syrup, we have our lime juice, we have our open proof rum, and we have our cachaça in there. We're gonna shake this up, we're gonna put it over some ice, and then we're gonna top it off with club soda and put a little mint spring in it. And it's gonna look and uh, probably taste amazing because I saw like some, some things, like some cocktails I see and I'm like, oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> this is gonna be good. I'm gonna take out any of the water that's collected as my ice has come to temperature. There wasn't too much of it. We'll pour over top. Liquids into solids, although that's not necessarily a rule, it's just the thing that I'm doing with it. And give it a nice shake. We're going to double strain this over top of the ice cube. I'm gonna go grab the ice cubes now. I'm gonna tackle the other part of this later. How many ice cubes can I put in this? I think, I'm, I think this one fits five, uh, four cubes. That's what I think. I'll bring the cocktail angle over here. Let's see what kind of angle we can set up for this. I'm also gonna need my mint. I don't, don't let me forget to get that. Please do not knock over the Southern Decadence, as we're now calling it, because it's funny. There we go. Shake and smile. That's the way we like it. That's the way I like it, at least. I mean, maybe not everybody likes it, but I certainly enjoy myself better when I'm smiling. Lo and behold, it fit. Wow. Okay. Um. So that's um. It's more. <laughs> it's more ice cubes than I thought would fit in there. Lo and behold. Look at how much space that glass has. It's wonderful. Oh dear, my rose water has fallen again. Where did I put the mint? Oh. Conveniently sitting right over here. Hello, mint. Good mint. Slap the mint. That's what we're gonna do afterwards. It's hot and sexy. Double strain. That's what we're gonna do. Double strain. I'm gonna take. I had a strainer. Oh. I freshly cleaned this strainer. Observe. I'm gonna put it back together real quick. For anybody sensitive to metal sounds out there like I am, this is the worst part of being a bartender. Putting the spring back on the shaker. It sounds annoying. I hate the sound of it. I'm very sensitive to uh, metal scraping on metal. So uh, even some of these shakers also give me a problem too. This sound, I don't like that. 
I cringe a little bit. It's not pleasant. But that's what we're gonna do. For the sake of the cocktail, I'm gonna hold it. And that's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna strain over top, first of all. And we're gonna top it with club soda. I'm gonna garnish this thing. Rye says, that's more than I thought I would fit in there. That's what they said. You right. Who are they? <laughs> They're your, I can't make it your mom joke here because we're trying to remain next gender non-binary. So your parents, it just doesn't have the same ring as your mom, but it hits just the same, especially from when it's hitting it from behind. Tee hee, funny joke, mildly sexual. It's just kind of what you get around here. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna top that off with club soda. I think I have club soda back here. I definitely do. I've got, uh, what is this, Whole Foods brand. If this actually has uh, three ounces worth in it, that'll be great. Actually, we definitely need more ice in there. Stop being so conservative. Put ice in there, put more ice in there. There we go, there we go. All right, yeah, dude. All right, that is awesome. I'll cap that off. We're gonna put some mint on it for a final garnish. Again, probably not as crystal clear as it could be, but we're making we're making it work. We are strutting. The whole point of this is to strut what you've got, and um, this is this is what I have. And then I'll probably put a little. I feel like this this uh, demands a straw. I'm gonna get a nice, pretty. Doesn't have to be pretty. This is a, this is, they're all pretty. They're all pretty pieces of mint. Actually, even some of the you know you're gonna take even some of the browner looking ones because uh, pretty is not what's about on the outside, about what's on the inside. Also, I'm gonna slap it because that's what you do. You slap mint, right? Ha <laughs> ha! Consider yourself slapped. Get in there. There we go. Get get all up in there. There is an array of colors happening here. Yes, are some of the leaves brown? Yes because some of the f leafy people that I know are also brown, and I love them so very much. This is it, this is what we have. You can be green, you can be any color you want to. You, you can love whoever you want to too. That's the whole, that's the whole, um, that's the whole shit, you know? I'm gonna grab myself a straw. I'm gonna go with a, I'm gonna go with a, a green one, with a green star. Yeah, if you hit birthing factors, says Riceroni, if there is one thing Prague capitals don't need, it's those darn conservatives. Get out of here. Get him out of here. Fun fact, slapping mint helps activate the oils. <laughs> slapping, I was gonna make another activating joke about slapping, um, but here we are. This is our Brazilian mojito. And honestly, that looks pretty damn good. Especially with this little bendy straw. That is absolutely killer from my perspective. That is awesome. I love the way that looks. That could actually use a little bit. Actually, why am I backing up the camera? It's easier for me to back up the drink. There we go. That's what it looks like. I'm also gonna take a picture of it too from my angle because I think it looks pretty. There we go. That's great. And I'm gonna put the LeBlanc Cachaca in the background from my perspective. Y'all can technically see it too. That is such, wow. That is a great looking picture. Dude, look out on the cocktail blog later for this one. This looks so pretty from my angle. Not to say that you guys have the short out of the stick. Sometimes it looks better from the cocktail angle than it does from my angle and there's probably some color science behind that. I don't know what it is, and uh, I don't choose to know so. Oh, it's too late for the photo. Wait, 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 wait. I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. We shan't miss opportunities here. I have, I got you, I got you very good. I can also do a command too. There we go. Oh, <laughs> who's gonna get it first? I wonder if it does it twice. Does it do it twice? I may have to fix that if it doesn't. No, only one of them. Sweet. Sweet, we made it work. That's what we call a race condition in computing. I had to deal with one of those the other day uh, because somebody was trying to request their passwords too fast. So this is a Brazilian mojito, as opposed to, let's say, your non-Brazilian mojito. The uh, or let's poof, back up a second. As opposed to our non-Brazilian mojito, just a regular mojito, you wouldn't necessarily add cachaça into the mix here. But we are specifically adding cachaça in this case. I say our. This is a cocktail by this is the, a cocktail by Mike Vanderhorn, somebody I follow on Instagram. And they go by Cocktail Complex. If you are an Instagrammer and you want a nice cocktail Instagram follow, I wouldn't even suggest my own account. Yeah, pictures and stuff, and the blog post up there too, and some of my reels do as well. But he's a much better follow than I will ever be because I don't plan on getting myself a DSLR camera and taking pictures of my drinks and spending any more than like you know, the duration of a stream to take a picture of these because we have other cocktails to cover. It's a fundamentally different type of show. Rye says, I think it only does it once within a certain time limit. That's right. That's how I programmed it to be. But shh, 
I am the magic behind the curtain. But it's made with Kachasa, as a, in addition to overproof rum. If we could get a white overproof rum, specifically a Ray and Nephew in this case, we would do so. But I was lucky enough to get LeBlanc Kachasa specifically, and uh, I'm going to take that win. This is LeBlanc Kachasa. It's so good. Oh my god. What does it smell like? Mint. What does it taste like? Wow. Oh god, that's so good. Wow, that is probably one of the best mojitos I have ever had. That is so balanced, the leaf fell out. It's okay, that is so balanced, oh my goodness. Have you ever had... Okay, this is gonna seem a little weird for a moment. If you've ever had a maple sugar candy, bear with me for a moment. This does not taste like maple. I'm not gonna say it tastes like maple. What it does taste like is instead of the essence of brown sugar maple, it's like the essence of like brown sugar mint, if that makes sense whatsoever. This tastes woody. It tastes funky. It is boozy. It is it is just the right amount of tart. And it's also just the right, right amount of sweetness. And it's like, I, I, this, this is blowing my mind. This is a really, really well-made cocktail. It's so good. And the best mojito that I've probably ever had. I don't really have many mojitos. I don't really like to put sour stuff in the drinks, um, but we do it here anyways. This is awesome. Like, I will say this. I can taste the mint. I can taste the cachaca. I can taste something that is different. Something that is off. I would call it almost woody tasting. Probably, I'm guessing, from the Gosling's 151 rum that I used. And it's also boozy. The alcohol is very ple uh, prevalent. And it's also nicely sweetened. It's lovely. And it's cool looking. And it's interesting because I, I was actually kind of surprised on this based off of a cocktail that Anna and I made last week where even though we added up more dilution, the soda water in this case, one of the cocktails we made last week still had a powerful taste to it. Because like I was not usually a big fan of spritz drinks because you take something like Prosecco Champagne or Club Soda and you dilute the other flavors. And I always felt like it just kind of watered down the cocktail. And I didn't necessarily want something that was watered down in terms of a lack of flavor. I wanted the flavor, but I also wanted to be a little more bubbly, a little more light. And this does that super duper wonderfully. I would even say that maybe it's even, I could even use a bit more soda water, which because I am the bartender here and I know what my tastes are, I'm going to add some more soda water to this to make it more akin to my tastes. Because I think just a bit more dilution on the sweetness there and the and the tartness will probably go miles for me. Yeah, that's good. Oh, it's tasting even more like I'm getting more of those cachaca notes now. And it's like to me, cachaca, this cachaca is very, very like ripe banana like. Uh, but now I'm getting something that's a little more nutty. It's almost like um. Not walnut. It's not that nut I'm thinking of. Not peanut. Peanuts are legumes. Like almond, almost? But like more like the shell of the almond, more so than the way amaretto kind of tastes like the almond itself, if that makes any sense whatsoever. That might also be the extension of that woody note that I was getting earlier. It's delightful. Rye says, I'm old, says Rye. I use Delegram. I don't need my Graham's instant. Delegram. I don't need my Graham's instant. I don't know if I understand that. Please explain that to me. But this is great. This is really, really good. Oh, delay, oh, delaygram, oh, Instagram, that's what it was, delaygram, Instagram, I got it, I, I figured it out. I'm young, and uh, also have a short attention span, so uh, that's why I didn't get it immediately. Some would say I'm smart. <laughs> They're wrong. It's about what's on the inside that counts. On the outside, maybe I look a little intelligent, but on the inside, I can be quite the moron sometimes. Um, but we're all morons at certain parts of our journey, sometimes the entire journey, the beginning and the end. And that's something that we can be proud of, proud and prideful. Believe in yourself. This is delicious. And I'm missing one of my mint leaves. I'm going to put that back in there. This is the cocktail that I'm going to be leaving with me behind the bar over here because I'm going to be drinking that because it tastes absolutely amazing. I think there are some cocktails that, um, as, as I'm continuing to explore the craft with all of you, that like make me like rethink some of the combinations that I thought that I already felt that I was confident about. Like for a while, I thought that I really, I was like, I just don't like tequila. 
I don't like tequila. Agave spirits are never going to be a thing that I'm into. I've had tequila cocktails that completely changed that for me. The one of them that comes to mind is one called Johan Goes to Mexico. It is an interestingly named cocktail that is basically a Trinidad sour, but it uses tequila. Completely changed tequila for me. That and a Mockingbird, which combines mint flavors as well with tequila and I think some lime juice there too. Completely changed how I saw tequila because I was like, actually, and, and there's been many more cocktails since that I just can't bring them to mind. The way that I feel about sour drinks. Sour drinks affects me in an interesting way. I suffer from acid reflux and GERD, so it, my, my body reacts a certain way to things that are prominently sour and tart. Saliva gets a little gooey. It's, it's kind of weird, and the details are not something that I really need to share with the beautiful people of the internet, but it affects me. And when I drink certain cocktails, they, I'm like, maybe the sour stuff just isn't my type of drink. I can't, I'm not allowed to like those types of drinks because my body just doesn't want me to. Sometimes it's like knowing that you're like, like mildly allergic to like cats, but like you want to pet those damn things anyway because cats, or maybe you hate cats, maybe you hate animals in general. Petting another human being, I guess, is an interesting analog here. Please don't take that too far. Uh, but you're like, you know what the consequences are, but you're going to do it anyway. And um, this is something that I would go back for again, despite my particular disposition. I also love the flavors of mint and banana. This is great. It's not even banana. It's the it's the right. It's, it's cachaca. It's beautiful. I love that. That is definitely going to be at, you know, I just realized, too. I utilize this app called Recipe Keeper to keep track of all the recipes that I curate. And I just I, I forget that I can, like, rate these cocktails i'm gonna add this to one of my favorites it's freaking delicious i forgot that i could do that because i was going through a whole like um change up thing the other day oh it's great rye says i knew this string would turn into a furry stream house somehow petting humans petting <laughs> that game seems to come up a lot more often than i think it does that's great anyway that was a that was a brazilian mojito made by the wonderful cocktail complex mike vanderhorn um i will I'm going to link in the description of the vod that comes out after this as well as in the cocktail blog to his instagram account it's awesome if you're if you're looking for like evidently if you're looking for really well made drinks that's that's a place to go i would definitely point you in his direction let me put this cachaça away it belongs in the back behind the other i don't say it belongs in the back behind the other rums and stuff but my um my uh, liquor collection is getting full <laughs> at some point in time if anybody is curious there is so many bottles back here behind this bar and it's organized in, a, in an interesting way i'm actually clearing out parts of my closet now which used to contain remnants from my previous hobby um hoarding electronics uh and i'm gonna transform that into a liquor closet because it's it's tough for me to, to like have to reach all the way into the back of the bar thing just to get a specific bottle and uh you know my as i get older my uh my knees are getting weak so uh maybe i shouldn't be bending down as much but i could use some more squats in any case that was delicious brazilian mojito that was delicious we're gonna erase this on board and we're gonna go on to we're currently on this selection of two cocktails that i curated as a part of this pride stream that we're going on here the first cocktail that we did was my best attempt at creating a rainbow I think it's a good analog to my skill level. Low, novice, but we have fun with it anyways. Uh, it was okay. It was called Paradise... Something. Paradise something. I forgot what the paradise was. <laughs> it's called the pa Rainbow Paradise. Duh, of course. And then we're moving on to a selection of cocktails that I curated based off of some prideful cocktail creators that I know who are openly gay or otherwise, who I follow out there because I like the creations that they make. I like the way that they speak on certain things, and I just like their mentality behind things because I think they're awesome. This one in particular was made by a guy named Mike Vanderhorn. He's cool. And one day I want to go to his bar because apparently it's really close by, and I love that. Um... The next one is going to be somebody who I actually brought up on stream about a month ago. That person is named John DeBerry. John DeBerry is a, uh, is a prominent cocktail creator, mixologist, bartender as well, who used to work at a place called Please Don't Tell, a, a, um, a speakeasy. He kind of got his start there and has been up there ever since. Uh, we covered one of his cocktails previously. It was the Side Snap Thirst Quencher, which came Thirst Quencher not the clencher, that came from a book that he just released called Saved by the Bellini, a book of 90s inspired cocktails, or just like cocktails inspired by, you know, the collective childhood of those who call themselves millennials or people born in the 90s, um, like I am, although I was toward the tail end of the 90s, so does it really count? I don't know. It really depends on who you ask. Um, but so this is another one that we've got from, I, I, it either came from the Bellini book, or it came from another thing that he was working on. This is called Caribbean Blue by John DeBerry. 
who I think is also a very good, uh, a, a very pretty good Instagram follow too. I would say every once in a while he's very honest about what he posts on there, and I'm a huge fan of honesty. Um, every once in a while, I will scroll through my Instagram feed and I will get pictures of half-naked men, and uh, oftentimes they are John. And uh, sometimes I'm like, oh my god, I'm at work. What the heck? And uh, other times I'm like, you know what? Thank you for sharing, John. I'm down with that. Caribbean. Caribbean. Caribbean blue. It'd be cool if I could write that in blue, but none of my blue markers really uh, did justice very well. Rye says, Razen, Razen Bowl Paris Dixie. That is definitely not that that was called, but if that's how you wanted to exist in your head, head cannon, who am I to stop you, Rye? More Than Awesome says, I have walked in and the first thing I hear is pictures of half-naked men. That's because you popped in at the right time. It's time for the strip part of the stream where Karen strips completely naked, or at least he tells you he does. I am wearing pants, but I don't have to reveal that to you, not do I. I'm just kidding, that was a joke. Anna's staring at me really oddly off stream. She is completely clothed, might I add. Completely clothed, like from top to bottom. She is straight on, like, she is so not revealing any part of her skin for the sanctity of, I don't know, what are you eating? My crackers. Anyway, cracker? Caribbean blue cocktail. No thanks. I don't really want to. Actually, yeah. You know what? I'll, I'll take a. I'll, I'll take a cracker. You want I have a cracker. I will have take a cracker. I have clothing on. Which Which one of these are the? No, actually, now you can see she's completely naked. Oh my God! Twitch TOS. My fiance is completely naked. Somebody stop me. Oh, that's a peppery one. That's not the peppery. That's a cheesy one. one. Yeah, that's the cheesy one. I can't have that. Oh, my taste buds. Well, these ones are like wheat. This one has the flaxseed. On and a cracker. This one's like garlic. There. Everybody have a cracker. Here you go. Here. Here's your cracker. There you go. Here's your cracker. <laughs> Super tasty. Anyways, here, you can take that back. <laughs> You're gonna give me the cracker they ate? Ew. Ew. Stream sloppy seconds. Why did you just throw it into the bin? Because you didn't want to eat the Twitch stream sloppy seconds. I was trying to save you. Brad says, I have been behind that bar. I know nobody knows what pants we have. Hey, Anna, says Brad. Did you say hi back? Hi. Hi, she says. Rice says, it's a care a an or a Caribbean. care a an or Caribbean. Caribbean. Care Bears! <laughs> I'm not going to be saying that word anymore. Instead, I'm going to only be using the song that is from the movie that mentions the word that I put on the board. The no, 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 you can't refer to it like that. You have to do a... <laughs> That's the rule from now going forward. Do you want to be Jack Sparrow? Do I want to be Jack Sparrow? Not in particular. He got lost in the middle of... No, nowhere? Where was he in that one movie? I don't know. He was in the middle of this white desert thing with a black pearl in the background. It was contrasting. Yeah, I don't want to be as lost as that man claims to be, or seems to be. Jack Sparrow. <laughs> He's the guy. Anyways, Caribbean blue. What might you ask is a Caribbean blue? Well, I'm gonna tell you. Wait, I said the word. <laughs> to make that blue, we have to create something called Kokurasau. 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 Another word that I can't seem to pronounce properly. John DeBerry puts together this thing he calls Kokurasau, which is essentially coconut flakes that have been sitting in blue curacao. The blue curacao will take with it the aspects of the coconut, and the uh, coconut will turn blue. I will show you. I promise. Then the, uh, the curacao itself will take in the... Yeah, the coconut will take in the aspect of the blue curacao, turning it blue, and then the blue curacao itself will take in the aspects of the coconut, making it taste like... like orangey coconut. Um... Did you get all that? I hope you did. I hope I also knew where I put this Kokurasa. Oh, I found it. It's down there. I got it. Limbo! It was Limbo. Limo. Limbo. Limbo. That's what it was. He was in Limbo in that one movie, which I will not share, but it goes something like... <laughs> of the car... Uh, whoa, pirates. Anyways, that's fun stuff. So the Caribbean Blue is a cocktail that is made in a shaker. We combine it all together, fill it with ice, and shake vigorously. Naturally, pour the contents of the shaker into a glass, including the ice, and we garnish it with... These blue kind of uh, kind of flakes that we have. We're also supposed to put a pineapple wedge on it, but I was not able to get to the store today to get myself a fresh pineapple, and I wasn't about to. I'm very mindful, or at least I try to be. I wasn't going to go to the store to buy a single pineapple, a whole pineapple, just for a single wedge of it. I probably could have gone to Target and um, grabbed the the little the individual cut wedges and then eaten it for lunch. Um, but I, you know, whatever. 
So we're just gonna go with what we have. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab ourselves a shaker. Hopefully not breaking a glass. Oh my god. That was awesome. It was great. And we're gonna combine our constituents together. First, I'm gonna grab myself a cube. Cube goes into one side. Tiny cubes go to the other side. That's how I get my cubes around here. There are many ways to cube. Um, this is one of them. I found that evidently it's uh, very efficient to not pop from the bottom, but to pop pop from the top. So pop 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 from the top, and and apparently rip my yep. This this is the one time that didn't work. Stupid shaker. Two more small ice cubes. You stupid shaker. It's not stupid. It's just. I don't really know what else word to use here. Why do you not have a drag queen on show tonight? I don't know. Any Actually, you know what? I don't know any people who are openly drag queens. I was cons I, I, I will walk you through my process. I was considering putting on like a bunch of makeup and drag stuff tonight because I can be found wearing drag clothes because I like to cosplay as women sometimes. Uh, but I like I, I, I was thinking about it. I don't normally go around. I don't make it a point to go around in makeup or to specifically dress like with the whole drag like thing there. So it just wouldn't be me. I actually was I, I was asked about that before stream started. Like, why don't you put on more makeup and more pizzazz and like the cool little like rainbow suspenders and stuff? I was like, because it's not me. You know what I am? I'm a little flowery. I can be a little fruity, and I'm also pansexual and a little flamboyant. So that's what I am. So that's as you see me here today. Uh, but I don't actually know any drag queens. Not personally, a little bit. A, a little bit. I am doing more pride related stuff next week. So if anybody knows any folks in Philadelphia who would like to, I guess join us for our bar stream hit me up put us in contact brad says then you just stored it and it carbonates itself it's great and it's mildly boozy i do like your twee flight outfit attended outfit tonight thank you very much i appreciate that oh oh i missed the comment that brad said about the homebrew recipe it's four parts water one part sugar and then the outside part of the apple yo that's tapache i know what tapache is i was talking about that earlier i accidentally made tapache because i left the pineapple juice in the fridge for way too long and it carbonated and it tasted great it's awesome i am i am one step ahead of you this time i'm one step ahead of you anna says we're in philly we can totally find one rice says where you are you, you can you can't swing a cat without hitting one lmao uh, uh the exact location is not something i will disclose there i say i, do I, I dox myself but i am in philadelphia toward the northern side in any case let's make a cocktail so the first thing we're going to need to add is oh my god one ounce of pineapple juice 30 milliliters of pineapple juice i get the thing that i made the orange blossom water has now voided itself from my fridge it's fine we'll just figure it out later this is my pineapple juice it's been sitting in the fridge for i was gonna say way too long but it's not way too long it's great it's carbonated it's got a little fizz to it it doesn't smell like formaldehyde unlike the first batch of the stuff that i made and uh it's great so first we're going to add one full ounce or about 30 milliliters of our uh, pineapple juice preferably fresh i don't think it could get any more fresh than this and i love that it's so good i got a little pineapple juice in my hands mm, so damn good i have been to philly says brad and uh, we visit with the bar the next. It's great, and it just costs two bottles of chartreuse. But you get to hang out with Anna, and that's pretty great. You also get to play board games. But, but you don't see that there is the equivalent. So the amount of money of alcohol that I have behind this bar is probably equal to, if not less than the amount of money on the board game shelf that's on that side of the room. It's incredible. Anna and I both have hobbies that we're very financially involved in. And isn't that just beautiful? We should have pride in our hobbies, too. The next thing that we're going to add is three quarters of an ounce of vodka. I don't specifically know what kind of vodka that we want to use for this. It was interesting because I was having a conversation the other day. So one of the cocktail platforms that I'm on is a, uh, is a, co is a platform called Crafted Pour. And Crafted Pour is essentially the portfolio for cocktail mixologist. If any, if you guys out there like make cocktails or, you know, make cocktail content, feel free to go check it out. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I was on a call with one of their employees the other day and just kind of like talking about things. And it was very cool to hear for like the sur the first like the first time somebody else look at me and be like yeah like everybody knows that like just because it's the same base spirit doesn't mean that they taste exactly the same like some vodkas don't sub out for other vodkas some gins don't sub out for other gins and i was like yes you're absolutely right because once upon a time we got this bottle of vodka from back home called skunk town and i compared it to the bottle of tito's that i had in my collection and i was blown away by how much i liked this vodka, the one that from home, but not necessarily the one that I usually have otherwise. And I was like, I know vodka is supposed to be a neutral grain spirit, but like this stuff tastes different. Like 
it just does. And I don't exactly know a way to describe that. There's science behind it. it and it's cool, because it was the first time I really got to like sit down and like talk to somebody about them. That was really, really awesome. I see, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Brad was saying that um, the Tetris E card game was kind of fun. That was Silver and Gold was the card game that we played. Have you, do have you done an absence show? God, I can't. God, I can't type. Have you done an absinthe show before? I did do one episode on the Green Fairy where we did cover some absinthe cocktails. At some point, I want to go back to it, though, when I have another piece of absinthe in my collection. The only absinthe that I have is this one called Vio Carre, and is the only absinthe that I can buy here in Philadelphia at my liquor store. At some point in time, if I have better reason to do so and I remember it while I'm actually at a liquor store elsewhere, I would like to get more absinthe, more at some point in time. But that was a fun stream. That was a really fun one. That was the first time I ever tried absinthe over ice. Or, I'm sorry, not over ice. It was over, um, it's a cube of sugar. That's what they call it. Either burned or otherwise. There was, I think, the check method and there was another method too. And it was really, really fun. Brad was also saying we reduced the Cameron game count by one. It's true. There is also a number on the board over here. It says 26 right now. That's the number of board games that we have to play that we haven't played yet. So there's 26 unplayed board games over in that thing over there, and there are over 300 unplayed ga video games in my Steam collection. Anyway, vodka. I vanth on about vodka for a while. I'm gonna use Union Forge Vodka, which is a vodka that I actually never tried before. I just got out of the store the other day, and it is made here in Pennsylvania with rye spirit, or with rye grain, as opposed to being potato, or corn, or other types of things out there. I think, I wanna say Tito's uses corn, I believe? Um, and I bought some other vodkas as well that use other green spirits because I want to kind of play around with that world of different constituent vodkas because I know that they taste different. The one from home, Skunktown, is potato vodka. And it tastes awesome. So I'm just going to like real quick because I've dabbled on long enough. Three quarters of an ounce, 22 milliliters of vodka. I'm putting it in this. Excuse me. And then we get some white rum. I'm going to grab some Bacardi for that. Oh, excuse me. This was in the local section, so I went with it. Oh, I need to pour it out. I don't know why I closed it. Rai says, have you done the bourbon trail? I have not done the bourbon trail, unfortunately. One day, one day. I'll admit, I have never done, I have not yet gone out of my way to experience like, I guess a spirit experience, if that makes sense at all. I, I think the bourbon trail, I've done some bourbon trail, but drank too much, drink too much to do it responsibly. Yeah. I've never actually gone out on a spirit trip before. This was like, the last time I had the opportunity to do so was during a time where I was like, ooh, ooh, like anything under a hundred, oh, anything over a hundred dollars is not something that I really want to spend my time on. Like that's a little too expensive for my blood. I've been on an engineering salary for almost a year and a half now and <laughs> and I have this hobby, so why not? Uh, but at some point, I will. Has anybody done a bourbon trail before? I guess Brad was saying he has, but he drinks a little bit too much. But if anybody else has done one, if you have recommendations, please let me know. Union Forge. Smells like vodka, but almost kind of smells a little cotton candy for some reason. Ooh. Hmm. Interestingly enough, it's not super boozy. That has like a very nice, that is undeniably a rye spice. That's good. That's really good. That has like a mildly spicy component to it that isn't the alcohol. Like if, if some vodkas I have are just very, very like evaporative. They're very, very alcoholic, very much in the front of my mouth. This is very much in the back of my mouth, almost as if it was coming from a spicy pepper or a spicy grain or a spicy spirit or like spicy grain spirit, like rye for instance. That actually, that just kind of makes sense there. But that's tasty. I think that was a good vodka for this one. It does have like a, a residual spice on my tongue that I'm very much a fan of. The next ingredient is going to be our white rum, and that's three quarters of an ounce, so I'm gonna pop that in there as well. I love how y'all being so chatty today. I appreciate that. There are like some points in time where I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna miss people's comments and stuff. But that's fun. We like the, uh, it kind of, this, the, the, um, what is it? The speed of chat, I think, is the closest thing to, like, an active bar that I think I've ever been in b behind the actual bar I'm doing today. So, it's a pleasure, and I thank you all for that. But, of course, if you ever go to Kentucky, um, for it, let me know, and I'll be your guy in Kentucky? Oh, my God. I look forward to that. If I ever find myself in Kentucky, I'll do that. Kentucky, right. I just wrote Kentucky Rye on my board so that I remember that, and I feel like me tomorrow is gonna be like, yeah, of course there's rye whiskey in Kentucky. Uh, Brad says, I'm also in for that. Time for a Discord trip to Kentucky. Dude, cheers to that, I love that. 
All right, the next ingredient, so we've added pineapple juice, vodka, rum, so far. Next, we're going to add this cocurisal, this cocurisal, cocurisal, um, that we were talking about before. Cocurisal can be created like this. Coconut curacao, essentially. You take coconut flakes, you put it in blue curacao, and you let that sit for like a half hour. And then when you're done, strain them out. After you're done, you are left with this liquid that we can call cocurisal, and you're left with these coconut flakes that are blue. Uh, which I have in a little container over here. These are our, these are blue coconut flakes. Actually, let me switch the cocktail angle over just a bit. These are the blue coconut flakes. We'll be coming back to those in a little bit. Uh, but now what you get is this curacao that tastes like curacao, but it has this undeniable coconutty quality to it. And I love the taste of coconut, so this is this is good. We're gonna add three quarters of an ounce of our curacao to our glass as well. And I'm gonna try not to get any of the residual coconut flakes in there because I did a really shitty job uh, straining that. Yep, I got one of them in there. It's fine. It's gonna be okay. And it turned things blue! I love that. More than awesome says, North Carolina is close enough to Kentucky that I would totally drive in so I can take uh, take a case of the good stuff back. Rice says, bourbon is only bourbon if it's made in Kentucky. Otherwise, it's just whiskey. And there are a bunch of other rules that we dis uh, discussed on the, uh, there's corn in your cocktail stream. Um, you can reference that because I can't remember any of it off the top of my head. Something about, I think it was, something needs to be 51%, 51% corn. I think it can't be bourbon unless it's 51% corn. I think that's like the grain requirement on that one. Well, I could be wrong about that. Brad says that uh, I will duck by Heaven Hill and get all the good bottles. So the people out there who travel for their bottles, I respect that. Last time, I, this was the first time, uh, the first time that I went to a liquor store specifically trying to get a bulk of ingredients from that particular area was actually during, um, that was around Memorial Day weekend when I went up to go see uh, my brother in Vermont. I went to the local. I went to the closest local liquor store that I could find, and I found found this 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 maple. I think it was a maple bourbon, maple whiskey. What is it? Small batch Vermonti, maple smuggler's notch, straight bourbon, maple bourbon. Tastes all right. Not super mapley. Uh, not as much as I would hope it would be. Um, and I also grabbed something else up there too, but I don't remember what bottle it was. So the next ingredient that we're gonna add here is three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice. We're going back to that lime juice again. So uh, let me get my squeezer and uh, we'll go back to that one. I'm gonna squeeze out whatever remaining lime juice that I have from this guy over here. And then we will donate her to the bucket. A worthy fate for anybody on this stream. If you've been sacrificed to the bucket before, raise your hand. Please don't ask me how. Or do. I'm gonna cut this other lime in half. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna add the other half. We need three quarters of an ounce, or about four, 12, 22 milliliters of lime juice. That's I think a little bit more than before. I don't know, that was exactly the same as before. There we go. There we go. That's about, that is three quarters of an ounce if I've ever seen it, about 22 milliliters. I don't know how many times I've said that. It's just like, it's been ingrained in my head now. It's wonderful. And we'll pour that into our glass. <laughs> Brad says, hi. <laughs> there we go. See, that was the raising of the hands. Rice says, okay, we'll have fun. But last call me for, but last call for me was about 20 minutes ago. Oh, all righty. I, I think I know what that means. Last call. You had your own last call. That's great. Have a good night, Rye. Appreciate you pop popping by. I think that was your way of saying that you're leaving. I miss you. Bye-bye. See you next time. And that's all that we need in our glass. We added our vodka, white rum, curacao, fresh lime juice, and everything else there. It's great. We're going to shake that up. It's great. It's gonna be wonderful. We're at, actually, we're not shaking it up. We're shaking it over ice. That's not quite up at all. That's very much down, I suppose. We'll combine. Uh, I've been talking for a while, so let's get all the extra water out of here. We'll combine liquids in the solids, pop that up on top, give it a slap, and then give it a shake. So that's it. Brad says, I'm gonna do my last call. I, I am gonna do my last call, but you're on the big TV. My hand is the size of a beach ball. Uh, on the TV, I mean, I don't really know how that works. RS Calv says heart eyes. <laughs> That's pretty gay, mom. But I like it. We're shaking things over here, fun stuff. In any case, then what we're going to do is John DeBerry, the creator of this cocktail, who is also admittedly married to a man, uh, also, not in addition to me. I'm not married to a man. Not unless Anna decides to change things up on me, which is totally fine if she wants to. 
Um, we're gonna strain this out. Actually, not, again, not straining. We're gonna pour this into a glass. We're gonna pour it straight into the glass. We don't need to worry about the ice cubes or anything like that. We're just pouring it, we're just going straight in. That's what it's all about. And then we're gonna garnish it in some way with our blue Curacao flakes. Actually, before I do that, one of the things that I wanted to do um, was, nah, actually, I'm not gonna do that. I was thinking like, I was gonna take the blue Curacao flakes that I have, the blue Curacao coconut flakes, and grind them up to be a little bit smaller. Honestly, if I was gonna rim the glass, I probably would have done it like that, but I just don't think it fits in this case. This is supposed to go on like a pineapple wedge, and it just like, it, if I was gonna do it that way, I would. But I think actually I wanna see what it looks like when we've got the big flakes on there, because I saw the big flakes and I pretty much immediately dismissed the idea of that being the garnish up on top kind of floating around. But like, I kinda wanna try it. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try it, because not only are we mixologing around here, we're also experimenting, because this is basically all chemistry, you know? All of this is chemistry. All right, let's get a view from, if I'm going to be putting stuff up on top of here, let me go up a little bit and then tilt it down a bit. There we go. We are scientists! Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. I know that's wrong. Anyway, let's pour that all into our glass. It's going to be blue, right? Wrong! It's blue. Oh, hi there. That is so pretty looking. Wow, it's blue and it's wonderful. Let's put some flakes on top of it to make it look a little more blue, but in a different way. These are the flakes. It honestly kind of looks like blue raspberry, like sour candy. And it tastes like kind of orange. It's tart. It's, it's tart. It's tart coconut. That's what it tastes like. Tart coconut. I'm just going to like put it all up on top. I'm probably not going to use these for anything else. So that's just how it's going to be. This is, this is our, what was it called? are blue, AKA the Caribbean blue. And it looks so cool. That is such a vibrant color. This is one of those examples of the cocktail, I think look be looks better from your perspective than it does from my perspective. This is nice and blue looking and it kind of reminds me of like those pristine oceans that you see on travel magazines. But from your angle, this straight up looks neon. I love the way that that looks. So let me pick a picture from my perspective as well. Actually, that looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. It's got a nice angle from there. I'm gonna take an angle from up at the top, and I'm also gonna take one from the side as well. And also one from far away, be a little bit closer. I am trying to do a little bit better with my photo stuff. I also kind of want to have as reference what you guys have too. So I'm gonna put a little, I'm gonna pop my own little photo thing there. I mean, you throw a numpad five in the drinks, and they always look gay. great. <laughs> yeah, they also look gay too. Hi, slip of the tongue, Freudian slip. Hi from mom and dad. Hello, mom and dad. Thank you for joining in on my content. I am Cameron, your oldest son, who makes content for interwebs. I love you, parents. Anyway, back to the other angle. We're done with the obligatory parental awkwardness. Now it's time to be the bastard that I know that I am. He says, also on the big screen at one house and probably on the big screen in another one. Oh, dang, is that mom and dad? Brad, <laughs> don't dox my parents. They've already doxed themselves. They've done the job for you. All right. Oh, man, that is tart. Hmm. What does it smell like? I forgot to smell it. It's just, it just smells like coconut. It smells like the garnish. Who knew? <laughs> I didn't. Um, yeah, that is, that is very, very... I was going to clean up, but I'm not going to yet. That is, it smells like coconut, and it is, it is a very tart drink. It is very prominent on that lime juice but like also too there is this undeniable like maybe it's because i just put a bunch of coconut flakes on top of it but there's this undeniable like coconutty aspect to it and to me coconut kind of tastes like almonds so this is almost like a non-sweetened amaretto taste uh, but it's blue i'm gonna go back in for another one because i feel like there's other aspects that i missed there because i was way too hyped about uh doxing my parents for them for a third time Yeah, that's interesting. So like, there's this, there's this like feeling that I'm getting on my tongue that's almost dry, but not like dry as in like a tannin type of, or maybe it is a tannin type of dry, but not like dry as in like persimmon dry or a dry red wine dry. It's dry like, if you've ever opened up like a, like a piece of bubble gum, bubble tape has this dryness to it, I don't know how to describe it. Bubble tape, 
not bubble gum, specifically bubble tape brand bubble gum in the tape dispenser, that has a dryness to it that feels like the dryness that I'm getting here. It's not like a scratchy sandpaper dryness. It's like a, has this been sitting a while in a container kind of dryness? But like, it's not unpleasant. It pairs really well with that sort of like attacking lime juice sour flavor that I'm getting. But there's also this like subtle nuttiness to it. Again, could be the coconut flakes, could be the infused curacao. Not really prepared to tell the difference between the two of those, but it's prevalent. This is definitely one of those drinks that, that, for me, because I'm so sensitive to sour drinks, I can't quite pick out the finer notes here. For example, the white rum that you use, the smooth texture or perhaps lack of smooth texture that you would be getting from your vodka. But the fact that you can just use white rum of any kind or vodka of any kind, pineapple juice, whether you actually get it fresh, whether you've let it sit in your refrigerator for a while, or whether you got it from a can, there are various different ways that you can make this drink based off of the ingredients that you have, such that your experience could be completely different from my own. And I bet if I took away from the, some of the lime juice, or maybe even use something like a lime juice that was a little less concentrated, maybe like a lime syrup, I've never actually tried that, uh, it might be a little more approachable to my flavor palette. But that's the that's the that's the Caribbean blue. Brad says, I'll be good, Cameron, I promise. Oh yeah, that definitely the bubble tape reference. It's like, what does silica gel taste like? Maybe. Drying? I would agree with that. I am definitely that kid who was curious about what the silica gel packets tasted like, but instead of instead of going the route where I put it in my body to try it for myself, I actually heated the warning on the, the, the package and I googled it. And apparently if you put silica gel on your body, it'll blow up like those Orbeez and can potentially block your gut, which can then kill you. And I was like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna, I'm not gonna sacrifice that. I'll just eat the dirt in the backyard instead for a, a different type of flavor experience. And uh, I guess that's, I guess, the difference between my silica gel bead potential eating and my dirt potential eating habit. I guess that's why I prefer whiskeys and scotches over. I'm about to throw, a, I'm about to throw a spirit completely under the rug here, comparing it to silica gel. What tastes like silica gel? What's a, what's a, I, I guess, I guess. I don't want to say gin because I like gin too much. <laughs> I'm not going to bother with that. Yeah, as opposed to insert other undeniably bad spirit here reference. That's great. Thank you, Internet. Thank you, Internet, for saving me for once um, and not telling me how to do bad things. Go. Actually, here's a thing that the Internet told me to do that I Googled otherwise that you're not supposed to do. There was a there was a, a TikTok going around that says that you can cure your wrist pain by taking it at a fist with your with your thumb inside of it and whipping, I'm not gonna do it with my hand, whipping like this. Like take your hand in the fist, don't do this. Take your hand in the fist and whip it like this because it's supposed to stretch out your tendons or something. If you do that fast enough, you will snap a ligament and you will have to have major hand surgery done because your hands are incredibly complicated. So don't do that. Maybe you have and you know what the consequences are. Please share with me in gross, excruciating detail. If it's not safe for work, please feel free to DM it to me. There have been weirder things that had popped up in my DMs recently. Your boy's getting getting popular around here. Work that body, it says. We're gonna do some cat cows. Do some cat cows as I, actually, I, I'm gonna put some water in this first and then we're gonna do some cat cows. I'm gonna clean up this container, it's kinda blue now. I'm gonna do like this while I, whoa, that's, that's not sealed. Actually, I can't do that motion with my hand. Now, this is a completely debilitating thing that I'm being asked to do. Here we go. I'm cleaning it out. I cleaned out my container. I put it off to the side. Here we go. Cat cows. This is how you do a cat cow. This is the ca cat position. This is the cow position. Cat, cow. Do it slowly. Breathe along with it. What you're attempting to do, which I'm attempting to do while focusing, is kind of open my chest, close my chest, open, close, open, close, open, and close. Anna, this is your reminder that we're supposed to update the, uh, the list of exercises. I can't be a mixologist while cat cowing. Maybe I can. Hi there, welcome to the bar of the next. Can I serve you today? We're serving Cosmopolitans all day. That's our next drink, it's a Cosmopolitan. Did you know that? It's a Cosmopolitan, that's our next drink. Anyway. Now that your cat cowing is over. God, that, that didn't feel very good. I can actually see why that's an exercise, to be honest. That, I felt that in my shoulders. I really much did. 
So I kind of spoiled what the next drink is going to be. We're moving on to a section, uh, let's see, we're at the two hour mark now. I think, I think I got time for like, eh, we'll just play it by ear. I have, I have more, as I usually do, I have more drinks prepared than what I think we're actually going to get through for this stream. I think I'll, 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 uh, I'll put out as a, as some of these content creator videos that I've been watching uh, recently, I'm going to get real close to the microphone for this one for all my fellow content creators out there. What you need to do is you need to add a call to action into your videos. So this is my call to action to follow my other social media profiles. All of these videos show up on YouTube, Cameron with an X. I also put shorts on there. They are also finding themselves up on TikTok and Instagram where you can find additional Cameron content to satisfy your sick needs of seeing my face in your feeds every single day. Also cocktails. Some of the ones that I don't cover on stream will actually make their way into those feeds because um well I like this stuff too much and it's fun anyway that's my that's my thing that's my call to action that's what I'm supposed to be doing Brad says if you ever get through all the drinks in a stream that's too many drinks I know how many care I know how many card drinks you had for our stream chartreuse drinks there was like 17 of them if we actually made 17 drinks during that stream both of us neither of us would be able to like uh the stream should not continue actually uh, twitch just added content tags content labels for when you have intended excessive use of drugs and or legal uh, and or alcohol um i was considering myself like do i have to label the stream like no this is educational i am not specifically intending on drinking all of the drinks that i'm making um, so in that way, I did not feel the need to label this as potentially alcoholic content according to Twitch's newest TOS and guidelines. Twitch, I don't know what the heck you're doing right now, but the internet hates you. It's really funny, but the internet freaking hates Twitch right now, and I think that's hilarious. That's why there's content of me on other platforms, because, uh, you know, I, I hated it enough, but, uh... You know, Twitch doesn't do small form content. Anyways, Brad says, we were surprisingly responsible adults. I drank more Tuesday instead of Wednesday, which was which was huge. Yeah, we, we went out the night before it. It was a fun old time. So the next cocktail that we're going to do is one that evidently has a much debated history to it. When I was Googling around for my first idea of what cocktails that we should do for pride one of the first drinks that came up was the cosmopolitan because of apparently the kind of origin of the drink itself which is evidently debated i have some notes over here that i'm going to go through in just a moment cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan aka the cosmo it's pink and it's lovely. And he says, hiya, I love how you clipped together the back of the flag. I, I did. So actually I tied it up in a knot. Actually, I, I, I saw a Pinterest post and it was a seven step guide to wearing your flag as a shirt. And for the life of me, I spent a half hour, <laughs> I spent almost 35 minutes before stream trying to figure out how to put on this flag. And I was like, Anna, I need help with this. And she came over and she, she knew exactly how to put it on. And I pinned it at the, at the front and I was like, I, I love you so much. It was very, very cute. Brad says, I do love this whole mood. It's colorful. It's great. I've been slowly but surely adding more colorful things on the bar for this month, and it's just beautiful. Um, the Cosmopolitan. So evidently, the Cosmopolitan has an interesting kind of like origin story associated with it. There are multiple people who claim to have invented the Cosmopolitan. There are multiple people who have said, no, I didn't invent the Cosmopolitan, but these people invented the Cosmopolitan. Some of the notable figures there evidently are people like John Kane, who claims that it was brought over from a gay community in Provincetown, Massachusetts, which seems to be like the most prominent and agreed upon story. There's also somebody named Neil Murray who claims to have created it as a riff on a drink called the Kamikaze. And there are other people such as the, uh, such as Toby Sacchini, who claims that the Cosmopolitan made its way through San Francisco gay bars, and when it found its way to his bar, he made an improved version of it, which became the more popular version of the Cosmopolitan that we see today. Either way, because of shows, for example, like Sex and the City, the Cosmopolitan is now a very, very cosmopolitan cocktail, and you can find it served at many a bar, whether they are homosexual or otherwise. Some interesting things that I found here as I was doing a little bit of research on the Cosmopolitan is people saying that the Cosmopolitan itself was a riff on another cocktail. Now, a Cosmo, at its core, is orange liqueur, cranberry juice, lime juice, and vodka. That's all it is together. Some people say that it is close to a Cape Cotter, a Cape Cotter being with vodka and cranberry juice and a little bit of lime in there. A kamikaze is vodka, triple sec, and orange juice together, which has a sort of a couple of components from the Cosmopolitan. But some people have said that actually the Cosmopolitan is a sort of kind of quasi riff on a cocktail called the Brandy Daisy. It's not a brandy. It's not a daisy either. That came from an old cocktail book from like 
I think it was the year 1930, uh, which apparently was originally said to be made with three or four dashes of gum syrup, two or three dashes of curacao liqueur, the juice of half of a lemon, and a small wine glass of brandy, which doesn't really seem anything like the Cosmopolitan, but hey, different strokes, different folks. People will say I was inspired by, I could say that I was inspired by the asphalt outside of my apartment and make a drink that is absolutely beautiful and call it asphalt. And people will be like, whose asphalt is that? And I'll point at myself. Maybe one day I'll make an asphalt cocktail. That'll be a funny one. Queen shit, Anna's the goat. I do love this whole mood. Anna really is. We were thick as thieves while I was there. Anna and Brad, indeed, indeed. It was a very fun time. I like, I like, I like hanging out with people. It's fun things. Um, I would say you should expect more of that in the future of more people because it's fun now, isn't it? So evidently, where we find ourselves with the cosmopolitan nowadays, evidently, according to the internet, is something that some folks find very, very like, very like they, they have like an identity that they associated with it, even a personal identity. And I think that's really cool to have like kind of a, a cocktail out there. Like I, this is not to say that the cosmopolitan is the queer or is the pride cocktail. That is not what at all what I'm saying here. It very well could be for some people, but you know what? If a cosmopolitan resonates with you for whatever reason, I'd love to hear about it. I've never actually had a cosmopolitan before um, because uh, I've never had Cointreau in my collection, but I bought some Cointreau specifically for this because the cosmopolitan is a recipe that Cointreau features on their website. And once upon a time, I was having a conversation with one of our fellow community members about, I think it was either, I think it was Cointreau versus Triple Sec. And I was told that Cointreau is nothing like Triple Sec and that I really need to try it. So. That's what I went out to do. We're improving our craft around here. Asphalt cocktail. That's what I said, Annie. Get it? It's funny. Rar S. Cal, my mother says, what are you wearing? Don't worry about it. I have a flag that's tied in a vest and a shirt, or a vest or a shirt, rather. Take a look around. This is me. This is me. The colors are blue, yellow, and pink, because that's the, tr that's the pansexual flag. And guess what I am, Mom? I like dudes sometimes. Not to worry, my Christian mother. I'm dating a woman. Yay. Anyways, sorry, that was a hit on my mother. I love her very much. I love her very, very much. Both of my parents, actually. I need to burp for a second. Excuse me, that's been held in itself in there for a while. I don't even know why. Don't even know why I bothered to share it anyways. It's great. We're gonna make a Cosmopolitan now. A Cosmopolitan, according to a recipe, this is the way that I wanted to try it. I've never tried Cointreau before, but now, ah, something fell to the ground. Now I finally get to try it. Cointreau, evidently, is, according to the back of the bottle, Government warning, according to the Surgeon General, a product of France, Maison Cointreau, le unique harmonie d'esprit d'un... I'm not even gonna bother to read that one. It's a liqueur, it's a product of French. It's a French orange botanical liqueur. I've been told that it kind of tastes somewhere between vanilla and orange, um, and I'm gonna try it because I'm curious about it. I did crack open this bottle already, I think, did I? Actually, did I? Yeah, I did crack up with this bottle already. So evidently, I did take a taste of it. Um, but being the dense and often forgettable, uh, forgetful individual that I am, I kind of forgot what it tasted like. So we're going to try that first. Delicious. And he says, oh man, not me doing the exact opposite at my mom, LMAO. You're wearing a flag. I'm wearing a flag. And he says, cloth is cloth, just shaped differently. It's true. This one used to be a rectangle. And now it's been bent in three-dimensional space, uh, looking like something more like a movie strip. Isn't that great? Well, Lab says, flag vest shirt. Flag vest shirt. It's exactly what it is. Abe and Annie, how are you doing? My goodness. Oh, you should have... I used, I used some of the blue raspberry earlier in a cocktail that now looks like that mess. We're calling it the Southern Decadence now because apparently it's an inappropriate joke, but it used to be Rainbow Paradise. Your contribution became paradise. But this is Quantro. Hi, my name's Cameron and this is Quantro. <laughs> that was, that was, wow, that was, that was potent. I'm gonna try that again. Oh yeah. So, as opposed to Quantra, so in terms of orange, right? There are many, when you think about it, there are a lot of different parts of the orange. There's the oil of the orange. There's the peel of the orange, which can sometimes contain the oil. There is the flesh on the inside of the orange, and there's also the pith of the orange. If I had to describe this, Quantra, the orange flavor that I'm getting is the juice of the orange. It's not the oils of the orange. It's not the pith of the orange. It's a little bit of a combo. It's, it's like taking a slice of an orange and biting it. It's got a sweetness to it that doesn't taste like the sweetness from an orange. That actually is that more like kind of like Demerara, almost vanilla, 
sugariness to it. It is a sugary orange. Imagine for a moment that you took some powdered sugar and put it into an orange slice and took a bite of it. That's kind of what this tastes like to me. It's very, very tasty. I like that. I see up here, blue stuff. Indeed. Matt Brad says the Southern decadence does kind of look like swamp water. Happy pride to everyone. That is, that is green. Not very rainbow paradise. See, it's because we mixed it all together. Rainbows need all the colors, Abe. Don't you discriminate. But it definitely looks like Florida swamp water. And it sounds delicious. What, Florida swamp water? Oh, no, 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 the, the, powdered, the powdered sugar and orange comment. Um, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna believe that Annie said swamp water smells delicious or t sounds delicious. So I'm just gonna go with that. That's so good. Man, I love that so much. At some point in time, one of the things that I wanna do at some point is I, I definitely plan, it is definitely an idea where now that I've got, let's see, I've got Quantro in my collection. I've got a Citron liqueur in my collection. There's Curacao in my collection. There is a number, uh, there's orange bitters in my collection and they are all orange, right? They're all different types of orange, but how exactly do they taste like oranges? And at some point in time, I've kind of played around with the idea of maybe not doing an entire like stream on comparing the different orange liqueurs, but maybe even like one-off things where we kind of taste them all individually. I don't know, I'm workshopping it for sure. Um, but eventually too, like there'll be like, I want to be able to do things where we take like a particular like subsection of liqueurs and stuff and try them all together, see what they do. Kind of like the, um, actually kind of like the corn, the, the corn episode where we did the different whiskeys and bourbons and put them all into old fashions and stuff. That's kind of like what I'm going for there. Annie says, no, I've been bullied back into lurking. No, Annie, come back. Please bring yourself and your swamp water with you. I say jokingly, haha, JK, love you, huh? <laughs> Brad's just a little boy, you. He's a nice young man. I vote for test all the green chartreuse substitutes. Let I says a one-off mix of all the oranges, including oranges themselves that I've squeezed by myself. Maybe. Um, actually, it was cool. Uh, Brad was talking about different uh, chartreuse substitutes as well, and there was a video that I linked in our Discord from Anders Ericsson about comparing different green chartreuse liqueurs, and I did finally watch that the other day. I'll admit, when I posted it, I did not look at it at all, but I did watch it the other day. I think it was... It definitely compared Genepi in there, and apparently there's some, there, there are some chartreuse substitutes out there, both from the various different parts of the, the thing, both on the color, the, the flavor profile, the alcohol content, the price, and otherwise. It's pretty cool. It was a good video. It really was. I need to watch more Anders Ericsson. That was... I had never watched any of his videos before because I didn't know what I was getting into and I'm afraid of that kind of stuff, a little anxious, but it was, it was good. I liked it. I liked it very much. Would definitely Anders Ericsson again, for sure. But in any case, Cosmopolitan. Let's make ourselves a Cosmopolitan. I cleaned out the glass that I was using before. Actually, no, 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 we're going to put this in here. This is evidently a flamboyant cocktail, so I'm going to use the most flamboyant shaker that I have to make a Cosmopolitan with. So what we're going to do is we're going to add to our shaker some ice, naturally. Uh, I'm going to put a couple of small cubes in there because this one doesn't play nice with the uh, large ice cubes that I have. For this, we're going to go back to the United States of America. For those who have been here before, you know what it's all about. It's time to play Muddle That state what states do we have with ourselves today well today because i'm feeling a little frisky and a little bit flamboyant as well we are going to take the bourbon capital of the world kentucky and we're going to put that into our shaking glass first we're going to take the entire northeast i'm talking about the entire northeast we've got connecticut in there we've got maine in there we've also got pieces of um of uh that's pennsylvania new york new jersey rhode island they're maryland it's all in there the entire upper northeast is just gone it's in our shaker right now we're also going to take minnesota because minnesota i think is cool california because that thing anything as bent as that has to go into a pride related cocktail uh we're also going to take nevada because it was conveniently cl uh, located close by and and um Somebody, one of the co one of the cocktail people talked about San Francisco, which I guess is close enough to Nevada because we already took California and put it in the glass. And uh, also because irony and Austin, Texas, uh, we're gonna put Aust uh, Texas in there as well because uh, keep Austin weird, my dude. Tune in next time for another Ice That State where we take ice states and put it into a cocktail shaker because. Down with America, there's only half of it left. But Alaska and Hawaii are not options. I will also make that note there. Neither are any of the other territories. Is there a Puerto Rico shape? No, there isn't. That for some reason, they only include 48 states, but I think is stupid. Somebody's gotta get me a giant Alaska ice cube mold <laughs> so I can fill in the rest of the United States. Oh my God. For the record, says Brad, going back up there, that that was the first shaker that he grabbed while he was here. Is it a sign? What is it, a slip of your subconscious? Who knows? It's pink and plaid. Anyways, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a full ounce of our orange liqueur. In this case, it is Cointreau. But as it pertains to the cosmopolitan as a whole, if we are an all-accepting group of individuals, 
doesn't really matter what kind of orange liqueur that you use. If you want to go wild, you could use a blue curacao here. You use a dry curacao, you could use, if you really wanted to go crazy, add a full ounce of orange bitters in there. I would actually be very curious on how that tastes. I'm not gonna do it this time. I gotta do the cooking by the book first because that's the, that's the way it's tasty. So full ounce of your orange liqueur. In this case, I am using Cointreau. One ounce or about 30 milliliters of your spirit. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab some cranberry juice. We're gonna bring a different color to the situation. The Cointreau, I will note, is a very clear and transparent. If it has a color, I can't find it. But some would say that transparent and clear is a color. But in this case, our cranberry juice is undeniably red. We've got an ocean spray cranberry this time around. I've been told horror, story, horror stories of spiders in the cranberry fields. And now you know about that. We're gonna add a single ounce of our cranberry juice. Again, about 30 milliliters for those of our friends who are across the pond. I need a little bit more. That's more like 29 milliliters. There we go. That's, uh, that's all I need. Great. Next, we're going to do a full ounce of lime juice. You can see there's a lot of there's a lot of limes on the stream. Is it a metaphor for the LGBTQIA plus community? I have no idea. But if you vibe with limes, <laughs> cool. I'll take it. I see Brad saying an ounce of bitters is a lot. I'll do that Trinidad, but not with orange bitters. Bro, open your mind to the possibilities. We don't just need to do full ounces or two to three ounces of just Ango. There are so many other angles to the Angostura. Know what I mean? I don't really know what I was doing there. But I'll start eating this. What did I say? Lime juice. I'm gonna kill some limes. I'm gonna murder some citrus! Uh, starting with the ugly one. I say ugly one, it's not ugly. I gotta stop using the term ugly. It's not an ugly citrus. I shall not judge you for where you are and you, your journey. However, I am going to split you in twine just like I did to everybody else. Because that's the game that we're playing. In any case, what do we got? I needed a full ounce of this, full ounce of lime juice. Here goes one lime. It's been sitting around for a little while, so it's got a nice crackle to it and Wow, that one gave like a full ounce of juice. Love to see that. And the other side of the lime as well. Give that a give that a squeeze. Try to make sure that that all goes in there. Great. I see little Abe saying, it's not ugly, it's unique. Yeah, I'll take that. I was gonna make a comment that like, well, if everyone's unique, then nobody's unique. But that would also be saying that everyone is ugly. But I guess just like everybody is pretty in their own way and beautiful in their own way, people are also very ugly in their own way as well. And that's not a bad thing. I have very ugly parts of my body. I would say that my, that my upper left traps specifically is the ugly part of my body. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not happy with this. I think this is considered my left side. It doesn't look like my left side. The left side looks like it's from this perspective, but my upper left trapezius is, ew. Ugly, but also pretty in their own special way. Next, what we need is two full ounces of vodka. I think, as we were talking about the various different vodkas before, I really liked the way that this Union Forge one was. I also have this other vodka that's in a plastic bottle. It's a Vladimir vodka. Actually, you know what? No, fuck it. I'm not going to do that. <coughs> What's most available at where I think a bar would be? It's going to go with Tito's or something. Tito's is accessible. Also, I'm down to the little bits of the bottle, and I am that kind of person where I see a bottle getting low, and all of a sudden, I don't want to use that bottle anymore. So then it sits in the collection, and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and it gets to a point where I just don't want to use it anymore. Not about that. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna, it's a new, it's a new, it's a new level of me. Use the rest of the bottle. Just kidding, I did not. Two ounces, 59 milliliters into your cocktail shaker. I see Brad saying, you have fine upper left drafts. Thank you. Now back to the cocktail show. We're gonna take this all in our cocktail shaker, and we're going to, what do we do with the shakers? What do we do? What do we do with shakers? If it's called a shaker, it shakes. Therefore, we shake. That's what we're gonna do. That was breathier than I intended. <laughs> yes, shake. Sometimes I feel confident enough to shake this one with one hand, but I also feel that at any point in time it's gonna completely fall apart. Which I feel like might be a pretty good analog to a lot of my other queer friends out there. Including myself. 
Yes, I do go to therapy. It is a thing that is necessary, I think. If you're in the startup world, I think you just need therapy, just like by default. Like yeah, with the way that shit changes and stuff around here, it's not, I feel like it's not wise not to have a therapist. I need this thing so I can properly take this off. We're straining this, right? Straining into a chilled coupe or cocktail glass. Lo and behold, I completely forgot to chill anything. So I'm not gonna put it into a chilled coupe glass and I can't open, I need the double. Ugh, gotta get the double for this one. The lab says, is that a rainbow pin? Which one? This one is a pants. Oh, hold on. I'll bring the cocktail angle over a second. We can look at my pins. Eee! There we go. 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 Where's the cocktail angle? Come here, buddy. Look at my face. Look at my, pff, look at my body. Let's see. What do we got? We've got a rainbow pin with the different colors of the rainbow, all represented by Pantone shades. I think that's awesome. Totally meta. What else we got? We've got this pin... That a friend made for me. The pansexual flag. It's made out of safety pins. It's so freaking cute. What else do I have? Oh, here's one. Here's one. Be you and be proud. That's a beautiful one. I love that one very much. Brad says, no, I think the one that's always breaks is the one that you have the glass pint glass with. That's true. Also, you can see it after stream, but I found the best pseudo bracelet that I wear all the time now. <gasps> Ooh. There's no fashion channel, but we're, if we're all about sharing our fashionista side, I'm down for it. OMG, I love it, says Little Ape. Those are all awesome pins. Absolutely. You know, I used to refer to myself as CJ Awesome because my initials are C and J. Um, but there's also another one in there, too. It's C, J, and C. Let me grab a coupe glass. What is the most flamboyant looking glass that I have? I like this one. This one's a nice... I, I think this is... I mean, from, from my perspective, this is, this is rather flamboyant. In my, my humble opinion. This could go garnished with an orange peel. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna garnish it like that. It is in Discord on the topic. Also, you and I have hung out, so you know I wear solid colored t-shirts and jeans. I need no fashion channel. This man needs no fashion introduction. This is all we have. I'm gonna fill it all the way up to the brim. My God. My goodness, it's a cosmopolitan. Somebody stop her. No, you can't stop her. She's on fleek where'd my orange go i need to peel a little bit of that orange i'm gonna put a little orange twist on there where, 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 where can we see the orange there we go that's where it is let me go get my peeler where is my peeler i have the peeler peeler i hardly know her only time i'm making joke this stream yeah i said that correctly let it peel around get a nice orange peel yep that's a uh, nice enough orange peel i wish it were longer but uh this is this is all i got actually you know what no 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 we're gonna go longer we're gonna go longer i'm gonna see if i can here, I'm gonna do this over here, so maybe we can catch what's happening over here. I'm gonna try to make this as long as I can, so I can kind of twirl it up. Could definitely work on my, um, peeling game. But alas, the only person's time that we're on is my own, so I can take my time with this. Here's a nice little twist. All the way around, right? That's pretty good. Not too bad. Not too bad a twist. I would go in it with a knife to try to make it a little bit more, but yeah, I don't know the best way to do this. Let me see. Actually, if I put a little slit in the side, just a small little slip, I should be able to put this on the side of the glass. Let me see. Let me see if that works. Oh my god. Well, you know what? It's a little weird looking, but I'll take it. There we go. This is our Cosmopolitan. Awesome! Actually, that's not too bad at all. Very, very good. Very, very good. The peel reminds me of a smile. Oh, thank you, Annie. It is the softest pink Cosmo, and it also technically my time, but this looks good! Maybe pin it closed with a toothpick. Give me an idea. Yeah! Now, it's kind of like, it's all, you know, that girl's dancing, and what would I do? Like, how am I? Who am I to stop this ride? Let me take a picture of this from my Instagram, too, from my perspective. I need to turn this thing around ever so- Don't spider glasses. I've been told not to. Do not spider glasses. Yeah, that didn't really- Didn't really work the way that I intended it to, but you know what? It is okay. Oh, no, it completely fell in. All right, well. Ah! You're gone. That's okay. I'm gonna take a picture of it anyways. This is my Cosmo. Please, ex please excuse the, the garnish that fell right in. It's great. Anyways. Here we go. Maybe pin it closed there. I forgot about that. Pippi 
a long stocking fan says F. I believe I'm going to assume that that is an F to pay respects. If this is if there is respect needing here, I, I must ask. Who's dead? I'm not dead, not just yet. More than awesome says it kind of looks from our angle that it's a swan preening itself. Poof, and the peel's gone. But you can see that in the Discord. Oh, you did get a picture of that. That's great. Thank you for that. I totally missed that. Thank you very much. All right, let's see. This is our cosmopolitan. It is filled to the brim. I'm not even going to bother trying to take this back to my table, metaphorically speaking. That smells very nice. That is like... That doesn't have too much of a smell to it at all. It is like... Very mildly green smelling. I guess that's probably the cranberry juice. Because cranberries, when I've smelled them, like actual fresh cranberries, they smell kind of green. Almost kind of tree-like to me. But other than that, there's not much of an aroma coming off of there. I actually am going to go for this. No, just kidding. I'm, I'm out. Ooh. 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 I've never had a Cosmopolitan before. It's nice. That's really nice. So, it's really sour. From my point of view, in my in my opinion, it is a little too sour for me. It had a whole ounce of lime juice in there, but of the sour drinks that I've gotten, this is like I can taste that orange liqueur. I can taste the Cointreau in there. Like the way that people say that certain bourbon whiskeys have a vanilla note to them. Supposedly that vanilla note comes from American oak barrels that they are sitting in, which is a requirement for bourbons, charred oak barrels. Or, 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 I think it was charred oak barrels. Maybe not charred, aged oak barrels. Don't quote me on that. But in the same way that some bourbons can have vanilla qualities to it, this has a vanilla quality to it. I'm, I'm like maybe going out on a whim here saying that if you were to take, if you were to batch Cosmopolitans in an oak barrel, I guess I would say it tastes more like a cosmopolitan by the analog that I just established there. But you know, that's kind of what I'm getting there. It's a sa it's a sour, it's almost like I'm trying to pick apart a particular spirit and its qualities. I would say that for the most part, the cranberry is blended with the flavor from the lime, which is blended from into the orange liqueur and whatever vodka is in there. This feels like it's its own flavor. It is orange adjacent. It is tart enough that I can't really parse out the cranberry notes in there, but I also can't quite parse that it is lime either. I would say like, if you handed this to me and you asked me what citrus was in it, I'd probably say lemon because I'm actually kind of thrown off. It doesn't, it doesn't have that like distinct like lime quality to me at least. And maybe that's because of the interplay that's happening with the cranberry juice there. It's interesting. I am actually, I am very curious to see how this would taste if you used, let's say, a different vodka or a different type of orange liqueur in this case great don't quote me on that quoted cam nice i like that one uh but yeah that's pretty good i would definitely say because sour drinks are not necessarily my thing and i feel like i gotta stop i really gotta really gotta stop saying that i feel like i'm a broken record but i say oh this is kind of sour it's not for me I need to be a little more specific on that but again less pressure on the human it's pretty good this is pretty good. It is balanced. At the very least, it is a balanced cocktail. It is tasty. And if you're trying to, like, I feel like I wouldn't necessarily be, as, be, as much as I'm trying to, like, hanker down on what this is supposed to taste like now, you don't have to. This is very much like one of those cocktails where, like, you don't have to think about it very much. It is just a flavor. It is sour fruit. Tart fruit. And I think it's a very honest cocktail. I'm actually going to take a couple more sips of it because I feel like I want to see if I can find anything else in that. Yeah, I am getting a little bit more of that orange note now. But again, it's so it's so muted. It's almost like that, that thing I was saying before about it being very similar to the orange juice as opposed to, let's say, the orange oil. I can taste the juice. But this is... A, honestly, this is almost like you combined orange juice, cranberry juice, together. Cold orange juice and cranberry juice, and lime juice. Cold orange juice, cranberry juice, and lime juice. And that would be like, I feel like that would be a perfect mocktail version of a Cosmopolitan. I feel like you don't need anything else in there. That's great, I like that. 
Sour adjacent, says Lil Abe. Cosmos are great, says Brad. They trick you into drinking a lot of them. This is actually true. I remember uh, I was when I was doing my research for the cocktail stream, one of the things that I saw in an article about a Cosmopolitan is the fact that they're like, Cosmopolitans are great because they make you want to order another Cosmopolitan. There is not necessarily a lot of alcohol in there. It's a lot of juices, depending on how you mix it, and it makes you think like, hmm, that wasn't alcoholic enough. That wasn't boozy enough. I think I need another Cosmo. Makes you want to draw. Makes you want to drink more of them. Makes you want to drink more Cosmos. So I did see that in an article somewhere. So I agree with that. You have brunch and you talk about boys and you drink all day. That's a. Uh, that's like what I did when I was uh, when I was hanging out with my boys and we had mimosas, endless mimosas, at uh, one of the cafes here in Philadelphia. That is undeniably good. That is undeniably a good cocktail. Maybe not necessarily. So actually, this is one of those cocktails that. Now that I am familiar with it, speaking openly that I am not a super experienced mixologist. If, now that I know what a Cosmopolitan tastes like at my bar, I would want to go out to another bar that is known for their Cosmopolitans, try their Cosmo, and see what there is different about it to be able to take it back home and be able to kind of like up the craft by trying to emulate what is already done so well out there in the field. Brad says, I have already picked a bottomless brunch place for when you're here. Then we'll go to the good place. Oh! forward to it very much this is great that's the cool thing about making friends in other places when you go to other places you have friends and that's a beautiful thing but it also says i mean you made a really great last word and in alaska i actually made another alaska for myself the other day um because i was really i really really wanted some gin that i had and uh, it was good and it was tasty and i liked it very very much all right so you made a cosmo that's great maybe next time we'll make a wanda <laughs> get it it's a fairly odd parents jokes. Cartoon. Did you know? Anna and I went to an anime convention over the weekend and we went to an ASL sign language panel and I learned how to say cartoon. This is how you say cartoon. Cartoon in sign language because it's a C and you take it down from your nose. To say anime, you take an A. Anime. Anime. Or I think you swipe it down. I don't know. I'm not a sign language teacher, so please don't quote me on that either. And I don't know how you can quote sign language, so Figure that out, Annie. Abe says, bottomless brunch sounds awesome. Thing is, I'd be the one wanting screwdrivers over mimosas, lol. Cosmo is the Caribbean drink. Don't you mean the drink? The, 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 the joke is long past now. Our local place does $12 bottomless. That's not too bad at all. That's actually pretty good. I don't remember what the prices are like around here, but it's definitely not $12. Hmm. All right, so that was a Cosmopolitan. All right, let's see. We were at the two and a half hour mark now, and I think, honestly, I think I'm winding down for the evening. I think I am gonna do one more cocktail, uh, something simple, something sweet, something that I've always wanted to try that I think we're gonna get in, that I think maybe I'm gonna like. I don't really know. We're gonna try it anyways, because apparently it's another staple in, uh, actually, we'll get into that in a second. We'll do one more cocktail this evening. Uh, it is the vodka soda. That's right. It's a cocktail. I almost kicked over the cranberry juice. It's a vodka soda. You may be asking yourself, why the heck are we doing a vodka soda? Don't worry. I'll give the story. Lo and behold, there's a person behind this camera. And that person is me. Vodka soda. I have to get out my phone for this one. I don't know if this is funny. I don't know if it's correct. I don't even know what it is, but we have to go into it anyway. So the reason I picked out the vodka soda is another thing that I wanted to kind of emulate. When I was thinking about what the heck did we cover for Pride, I thought of the Pride flags. I thought of the rainbow. I thought of queer people and their creations. We thought of queer cocktails, cocktails that are, you know, kind of related to people or kind of the, related to the communities that the cocktail is drank a lot in. And one of the other things I found as I was kind of searching through my thing was some place, some website specifically claiming that they know, they can tell what your sexuality is or your orientation based off of the drink that you order. And I thought that was really interesting. So I went down the rabbit hole a little bit. According to homoculture.com, I think homoculture.com, thehomoculture.com, it says this. 
and this was published back in 2014. When going out with gay friends, you can almost pinpoint by who they are exactly the kind of drink they will order. Gays are so predictable. It's probably why certain drinks have become the standard drink of choice for stereotypical gays. Let's go through the list, shall we? According to thehomoculture.com. Twinks, vodka soda, light beer, and Jaeger bombs. 20-somethings order cocktails with sexy names like The Rim Job, The Hole in One, or Sex on the Beach. Dirty 30s order cranberry and soda or gin and soda. Graceful gays order Smirnoff Ice or Cosmopolitans. Beefcake men order gin and tonics. Bears order pints and beer. Drag queens order tequila shots and beer with a straw. Senior gays order Red Eyes or Caesars. The non-drinker will order a Cran and Soda or a Shirley Temple. And lesbians will order red wine or a lager. They also ask what other stereotypes of gay drinks are out there? Leave your comments below. And there is a single comment. And the comment is otters. I'm sorry. I have to hold on. Join me for a moment. I have to answer a captcha. A moment. I'm going to prove that I'm human on stream. Look at it. Oh, that's not it. Crosswalks. What do we got? Crosswalks. Crosswalk. Crosswalk. Nope, not those. Crosswalk. Nice. Am I human? Yes. Otters order margaritas, whiskey sour, and a Mai Tai. Uh, I don't exactly know what a, uh, an otter is, so I'm going to openly search this on the internet with everybody watching. No, not those beautiful things. Otters gay, I guess? Gay otter. What is it? What does it mean? I need to know. Otters. Ooh, the otter has a flag! I didn't put that on my board. Do I want the cookies? Absolutely fucking not, I don't. I don't want pro features! Otter flag. Within the LGBTQ community, otter is a term to describe a type of gay man. Otters generally have a lot of body hair, much like bears, but are smaller in frame and or weight, considerably less than bears. Otters are usually found in the vicinity of bears, and the two can often be found at the same meetups, events, and gatherings. Hopefully we have all learned something today. I hope so. I am apparently a beefcake man, says Brad. All right. Addie Annie says, Lil A just had like three Shirley Temples on Sunday. Brad responds with, I do also want to see otters holding hands. A hairy twink? That was my impression from that description that I just read. What was what site was that? That was according to tiny.com, T-A-I-M-I.com, wiki slash gay otters, terminology, identity, presentation. Apparently, Tiny has an app. Um, color me, not at all interested. Uh, so that's that's what we learned today. So why am I making a vodka soda? Is it twink. obvious? Anna yells in the background because I'm a twink. Evidently, that was in the social circle, in the social circles that I surround myself in, I have been referred to as the twinky kind of man. I am I am a short and lanky individual. I have a relatively high voice, and I do kind of steer towards the queer side every once in a while, depending on the context and stuff. Well, that's why you see. Well, ironically, before you, legit, all of my crushes were gay. Really? Are they yeah. still gay? They're, they're all still The answer is yes, I still am, kinda. Oh, you weren't one of my crushes, you just asked me. You didn't crush on me? No. What the heck, dude? We've been dating for like nine years. I was so upset! <laughs> I guess I'd be upset if the guy I was interested in was gay. No, wait, that's not, that's not true. I guess the opposite way around. Elliot, whoop! What else do you have to say? And it like sneaks in off camera. It's funny because y'all can't see what's beyond the camera and every once in a while the, the live studio audience like Anna for instance will just sneak off camera. She's not usually sitting there, but I like to imagine that perpetually she always is. No, That's great. I just randomly sneak in. Right now I'm taking a break because I don't want to write another 22 note cards. That's great. Annie says hi. I see that. Hi yo. Lil Abe says, and the Shirley Temples were delicious. You enjoy that, Abe. Yes, you do. I don't like Shirley Temples. That Otters are baby bears. Anna's laugh is hilarious, says Annie. I don't know. It's weird. Having been there, I assume if Anna isn't writing notes, she's watching. It's great. Dude, dude, celebration. Since last week, Anna's a doctor now. And that's a cause for celebration. That's a cause for celebration. Where's my party horn? Anna's a doctor. She graduated. Woo! Actually, you get a balloon? The hell is my party box? What? My party box? Give me the balloon. I'm going to make no. a balloon for you. No, she's not going to do it. Far away. She's not going to get the balloon for me. Make a party hit. Want a party hit? Yo, Cameron, I have a question. Uh, Anna has a question. Yes, my dear. Never mind. I will. Do circle legs. I'm doing circle legs. I'm doing circle legs and shoulder squeezes. Oh, my God. Okay, do you remember? I've never been double worked before. <laughs> oh, my God. I should go triple you. <laughs> Dude, I've never been double worked before. This is incredible. Are they giving you more? I, I don't know. 
I don't know. There is a limit, I think, of three work your bodies. I think it's per person for per stream. Person. Per person's first stream, I think. Because apparently work I it. Did three in a row once. Oh my god. Cramps. This is incredible. Oh my god. Work it again? Oh, it's more shoulder squeezes. I'm just gonna do them like twice right, as okay, fast. Okay, first of all, no. Wish I could do redeem a kazoo moment with the hats. Honestly, you've earned it. No, you graduated, right? He's right here. Squeezing right here. There you go. Shut up, you graduated. You graduated now. Congrats. Okay. Actually, the graduation will continue. That's what you get. Actually, you pick a song. You're the one who's graduated. You pick a song for us. Song. You don't know any songs? Mr. Crystal. Mr. Crystal? That's an eight minute long song. I'm gonna only do, I'm gonna do a little bit of it. As I make a vodka soda. Here, we're gonna go over the recipe first and now I'm going to kazoo the Mr. Crystal oh, by Ninja Sex Party. Anna's got a hat? Oh, she got a hat? Think about Anna being a doctor. Anna, you gotta throw a hat now at Cam. Oh my gosh, she's gonna throw a hat at me. This is funny. So a vodka soda is made with two ounces of vodka and you top it with club soda. I'm using Topo Chico because I'm a mineral water kind of bitch and we're gonna use this cheap ass vodka that I found at the store. It's Vladimir because I have a friend who's Russian and we used to drink vodka together. It's stereotypical and I love him very much. Where's my singing? Totally no homo. Oh wait, I'm kazooing it. No? What, what do you? Your graduation cap. Oh, oh, your tassel fell off. Don't break my hat. The tassel fell off. That's an eight minute song. I'm not doing the entire song. That's do, wild. Do, do, do. Is my actual song. Oh, yeah. Fine. <laughs> Long ago and far away in labyrinths of coral caves. I'm missing. You have to be on here to watch. Oh my god, do I have to like with four stand lights, back, with magic or some shit like that? It's magic had been used for good and all men lived in brotherhood until the necromancer came upon his steed of bones and flames. The knights and nobles of the land did all they could to make Anna graduate, but not a single blow was struck. Alas, for he was strong as fuck. That is the best falsetto you've had in months. It's because I've been talking for two and a half hours straight. Oh, you're doing great. I'm very warmed up right now. I like to sing. No, Brad Bunce is eight minutes. What states are you using? What's that say? I'm not, I'm not doing the full eight minute song. No, actually, I forgot what the words were afterwards. I've got stage fright, apparently. What states are we using? I'm using the entire rest of the continent of the United States. It's, it's out. I'm just putting every single ice possible on the glass. Yeah, I'm glad that you noticed that I was using this one. If it isn't gonna be eight minutes, I wanna refund it. It's so funny. Yeah, I don't know the entire song so far. I sing it like every single time we do a uh, uh, long car trips. Yeah, I think our, our I put it on so I get a break. Our next long car trip is gonna be uh, um Gen Con. Gen Con. Going to another convention. Oh, we're gonna have to contact you guys. Oh yeah, we're going. Yeah, we'll be in your area. I want to go to the um. I want to go to the main cafe that's nearby y'all. Don't specifically say who, please. Let's not let's not dox our peoples on streams. I'm not doxing them. I just want to go to the main cafe. The entire continental United States. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, the entire continent of the United States has all been put in there. And I'm going to use it for my twink-worthy vodka soda. Two ounces of vodka. Loves twinks. This one's Vladimir. This is a vodka. It's very tasty from what I've been told. I just opened it. You're going to drink directly from the bottle? What about Oh my god, people? that tastes like sanitizer. Eh. Nope, not using that. You just... Nope. You can't just drink from the bottle. I'm going back to this one. What I take it back. People? I'm not going to treat my body as a fucking temple! Then what are you gonna do with it? 
I'll use it in other stuff. Wait, shit that I don't care that? about. I bought that yesterday. No, you that was great. You Just in case you're accidentally near me, text me your Discord before. Oh, oh, for the oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like the the thing to keep track of now is I need oh, to make sure I mark on my map like where I know my people are so that I'm not like accidentally be near my people. That's why I'm trying to get better at this social media thing, like letting the world know like where's camera with an X? Not specifically, of course, because I don't want to be, like, sniped or something. But, like, just so, like, you know, we can all pal around and be the community that we know. Oh, my are. cousins moved, so we can't visit them now. Your cousins moved? Yeah. Would you like to share their name, address, and social security number on stream? They were in Ohio. Oh, okay. Now they are not. Doxed. Two ounces or 52, nine milliliters of your vodka. He says continuing to try to make a vodka soda. Can't just let this twink drink, for God's sakes. My God! This is wonderful. If I haven't mentioned already how much fun I have on these streams, uh, yeah, this is a blast. Where's camera with an X? Laser pointer appears. Oh, I, I get it. I get it. Wait, wait. Are you actually pointing at the screen right now? Brad, stop. 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 <clears throat> that was my impression of a cat chasing a, a laser thing. Oh my god! Oh, evidently my, evidently my flag came undone, so I finally get to wear this thing like a toga like I've always wanted to. This is great. My street number is either prime or not a prime. Right on the forehead. Got it. Not the nip slip. Oh my. What? Oh my. See, look out of my way. And now we're going to put some Tapo Chico on it. Eh, can't hook, open that with my hands. I'm going to use a bottle opener, which for some reason I don't keep right behind my bar. What the hell is wrong with me? You should have one. I was going to use my... I, I know I have a bottle opener around here somewhere. Oh, I can get out your fancy one. What is wrong with me? Where's my bottle opener at? I got them over here. Nope, they're right here. This one is just straight up a piece of metal. And apparently I'm not doing it correctly. Whatever. Whoa, it's bubbly. It's great. It's Tapo Chico. <laughs> Vodka soda. I love that stuff. It's good. It's good stuff. Get out of here. <laughs> he may or may not live somewhere. <gasps> somewhere on the planet Earth? Wow, you got me. Really. Damn. Thanks a lot, assholes. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> But you, Brad says you probably have one with the fancy wine stuff from your parents. I do actually. That's what Anna was going for. Yeah, we can pull it out. It's very funny. I'm gonna make sure I stay hydrated back here, folks. I hate how difficult this water bottle makes it to drink. This is a vodka soda. I'm now gonna garnish it with a lemon wedge. Oh, there goes the yeah here. Yeah. I'm now gonna garnish it with a lemon slice. How am I gonna do that? You may ask. Slice one lemon oh God, down the center. It smells like Fruit Loops over there by the window where we have the Fruit Loop candle. Interesting. I love this. Very fun I anime. Should buy another one. Just we should buy more smelly candles and I should buy yeah, more I liquor bottles. It's Dumbo. Anna, what's up? I'm gonna put this lemon peel onto the cocktail. Very distracted. I don't want to go back and do my work. Anna does not want to go back and do the work. Come back here and join for the stream. No, We're at the end anyway. We're toward the end. I'm going to put this I lemon slice. Buttons. I'm going to pee. I'm going to... I'm not going to pee. Please watch out for the glasses I lay haphazardly on the ground. Why do you do that? I have a lithogram of Cinderella. Hold on. But first, I just squeezed a little bit of my lemon inside of my glass. It's great. Celebrating. Oh my god, that's so cool. Give me another one. Give me another. Wow, that's so cool. Give me another one. Oh my god, that's cool. Ah, no, you can't have. That okay, one. I can't that use that one apparently. Own. I'm gonna garnish the side of this with my with my lemon slice. <gasps> this Look is my it. AP ones. Back when those were a thing. Can piss us his pants live. That's what's happening. I can't eat the loops. I'm not allowed to nibble on the loops of the candle. Was a contest did I see a dip Disney button? You did for at least a couple frames. Here we go. Here's an, a first visit button. Here's a happy birthday Mickey button. Here's a pass holder exclusive food and wine button. Oh, that's a birthday button. You can't have my birthday button. Wait, but I want the birthday button. I have like four birthday buttons that I literally just pulled out. I want the birthday button. You want There's them? another button. Here's a family reunion. It's button time! Button time, button time. It's oh, we're gonna have the old engagement time. one! They say when you can't beat them, they you join them. They don't these out anymore. Here we go. What do we got? 
happily ever after. Oh, that's so they sad. Don't engage, they don't send them out. People anymore. can't get happily any after anymore. No, they get the weird oh, one. Oh man. The agagme one. The agagme. A gag. A gagme. There's a Beauty and Beast. Don't break that one. I'm gonna break this one so hard. That one's for the Disney. These are a lot of buttons. Anna's handing me a lot of buttons. And who well, am I to Aaron's deny my like, dearest? I want to decorate, and I was trying to find Dumbo, who has all my buttons. The vodka tonic is kind of how I make vodka tonics. Really? Except I pour a bunch of clear booze in a glass and fill it with enough tonic. We're starting to see good. Here's audition for the American Idol. That feels kind of similar to how I make my own vodka tonics when I do. So as Anna's going through more buttons, allow me to share you guys with a little bit about the vodka soda. Everyone thinks it allows you to like not have as many calories, but actually, did you know that there's just as much calories in a thinning of vodka as there is in pretty much any other spirit out there? Just because, so long as you're drinking alcohol, you've got calories because your body is going to process the ethyl alcohol into smaller molecules and stuff. It is just kind of a thing. You're not going to avoid any calorie, calories by ordering vodka sodas. Green. I don't have any green on yet. We're going with more buttons around here. So green. if you think that you are the kind of gym bro to order vodka sodas at the bar, you are just making yourself look like Maybe a pretentious douchebag. Just saying, I've met one of you before. And when I asked you, yo, what are you drinking there? And you said, vodka sodas because I'm on a carb cleanse. I was like, huh? Loading mail to this. They also left the bar conversation by saying, excuse me, I have to go meet an attractive lady. And I was like, yeah, I doubt that. And then he walked away. Well, maybe they were trying to put it into the universe. If you manifest the kind of energy into the universe, the universe will provide. I think that's provide. enough buttons. Now. I did it. I'll we did it. Over here. Thank you, love. I appreciate all these various gifts that I have put upon my body. I'm so sorry that I threw the first half of the gifts on the ground. There's only four. There's only four of them. It's you shouldn't kill the get a Cinderella with the gram one because that's from like 19... Get a Cinderella with the gram, you say? This one's from 1988. It's an old button. Would you like to hand me the button? Are you going to put it on? Oh, yeah. Just don't break it. Oh, I'm going to put it on all right. That one's open. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's open. Oh, Lord. Okay. Don't hurt it. Eh. Eh. It doesn't want to go through my shirt. That's because it's an old one, so it lost all its points. Oh my god, it doesn't want to go through my shirt. What is up with that? It's because it's from 1988. That's an old-ass button. That is older than- I don't know if I'm comfortable putting this button on. That's older than my parents' Oh, marriage. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. Anyway, there are a lot of things that are very close to stabbing me right now. <laughs> Where were we at, folks? I'm sorry that I just missed all of your chat messages. I'm not going to bother going back for that. I'm going to go read them now downstairs. This is my knife that I'm now putting away. Here you go, Taylor. There you go. All right. Well, the top... Whoa. The vodka soda is made by combining vodka with soda water. I whoa. use Tapo Chico mineral water. Not technically soda. Sorry. Not sorry. This is wonderful. This is the kind of chaotic energy that I live for, by the way. So, evidently... I actually gave my whole spiel about the lack of calories or the uh, supposed lack of calories when you're drinking a vodka soda. It's not true. It's like, it's not true like in the least bit. Let me take a picture of this beautiful thing. I'm gonna put a little, I'm gonna put a little bit of a little, uh, you know, one of those straws in it. What do you call those things? This is great. Brad says, quick now, just say things for Anna because Cameron is checked out. Hey Anna, you're the best, I miss you. Says Brad. No, I've checked out for the evening. I need just like, <laughs> I'm gonna respectfully just take a moment of silence for a moment. <sighs> All right, welcome back to the show. This has been wonderful. Abe says, Dr. Anna, you're super cool. Congrats again on graduating. That was wonderful. I, I, she's still gonna be awake by the time I go downstairs. This will be a, will be a fun after stream uh, powwow. I've never actually, I've, okay. I've never actually had a vodka soda before. So this is gonna be, this is gonna determine whether or not I actually enjoy a vodka soda. Wow, I just took a real big gulp of that. You'll be surprised to know that vodka soda, just, just a little bit, tastes like fizzy vodka. There is an essence of, of, Sweetness to it, a little bit, from the club soda. Mineral water, Tapa Chico actually, mineral water. There is a certain stoniness. I would describe if cocktails were stones, cocktails were rocks. If cocktails were boulders, specific types of silicates, I would say 
that a Manhattan is granite. I would say a vodka soda is marble. Join me on another stream where we our theme will be rocks. Rocks and cocktails. Rocks and cocktails. Rocktails and cocktails. One day. <laughs> and it tastes like soda. And then you get so drunk instead and you just get a Negroni, says Brad. And honestly, I actually have an entire... I, I have a, a bottle over here. Actually, I have a little container, uh, a water container, a little hydro flask that contains four Negronis in it uh, because I made Negronis as demonstrations for people and didn't want to drink them all at once, so I just put them all in a bottle. So uh, I've got a lot of Negronis. Rocktails! You get it? He said stoniness. I heard stody, stoniness as I thought we were in urban. <laughs> like, uh, it was so funny. I got a new shirt at the convention over the weekend, and one of them was a stoat. Uh, I, I, I didn't get that one. I got one that had an owl on it. It was either an owl or a stoat, and I like stoats. Stoats, I think, are cute. That is a vodka soda. It tastes like bubbly vodka. I don't really know what else to what else to say there. It like it tastes like I like I liked the vodka that went into it. That was Union Forge vodka. That is nice. It is a nice uh, nice to do it. The the Vladimir vodka just straight up tastes like ice, isopropyl alcohol. I don't think I've ever had a worse vodka, ever. That tastes terrible. Maybe it has a place somewhere. Not here. Not in my not in my twinkful vodka soda. That's it, y'all. Nah, I'm I'm done. That's that's all we got here. <laughs> I'm not gonna do any rare cocktails. This has been incredibly fun. What an interesting set of cocktails. What a wonderful set of characters we have around here. Oh my god. You could have a shot of Everclear. Usually it does not. Weirdly tastes like canned vodka and soda. No kidding. What an idea would it be Everclear soda. Everclear and soda. A shot a shot of Everclear would kill a twink. A, a, a wittink. Twink, even. One would never know. So where have we been this evening? Let's do a little bit of a summary around here. Made a vodka soda. Where do we start things off? This theme was pride. For those of you who are joining us later, I am significantly drunker than I was earlier. It's Pride Month. If you're not cool with the gays, get cool with the gays. I know people in my life who were just like, no way, gay! And now they're like, okay, gay! And I love those people so much because we like to see that kind of love in our society. It's great. Are you not making one up this evening? I am not going to make up a cocktail this evening. I'm not going to do so. It will be in my free time. I, uh, I was looking for your inspiration over the weekend, but I'm not going to do it. Well, not going to do it. Get on, the, get on the pride train. Get on the hype train. You don't, have to be, you don't have to be anything other than cisgendered and heterosexual. That's fine. You do you. But like, if your whole shtick is like making it so like people can't be happy, quite literally, I don't like you very much. However, I am still very curious to see what your perspective is as we grow collectively as individuals in this global society that we live in. Pride Train goes, choo-choo, I burn all my points on eight minutes of singing so I can't convince him to take, I can't convince him to make up a drink. That's so funny. Y'all are so funny. We started off with something that looked like a rainbow. It was called the Rainbow Paradise Cocktail. Sing for us, we're doing it again. Education is a conversation, and apparently it's a song conversation. We find ourselves at the at the end of our cocktail stream where we have our prideful cocktail here. The first cocktail that we had this evening was a Rainbow Paradise Cocktail. It used to have many, many layers to it, specifically one red, gr uh, yellow, and blue. But alas, what happened here? We find ourselves, you and me, here. It's green. It looks like swamp water. And for some reason, it is even more appetizing than it was previously. I like that. Yay, OG. I don't know what's going on anymore. This is more voice modulating. The Rainbow Paradise Cocktail was what we covered first. I described it already to the specifications of another Channel Point Redemption. And now we'll move on to another one. We also made a Brazilian lemonade, and the Brazilian lemonade used cachaça as opposed to just using rum. I like rum in my mojitos, but this one was even better with our cachaça. This was probably one of the most wonderful cocktails of the evening. And it still tastes pretty good, because I fucking love cachaça. That was a spoken point in the song, actually. I should get a refund. Ah, I'm a mod. I can do that. Oh my god. Continuing on to the next cocktail of the evening, we had this one from... Oh, actually, first of all, I will say that this was a cocktail 
from Mike Vanderhorn, aka Cocktail Complex on the interwebs. We also had one from John DeBerry. John DeBerry made the Caribbean blue. Caribbean blue. Where's my kazoo? Caribbean blue. It rhymes with kazoo. I cannot find my kazoo. The kazoo is lost. I'm sorry for you. Uh, and it contained this thing called Co-Curacao. And the Co-Curacao contained the coconut, the coconut infused with Curacao. Specifically blue Curacao. I and mean, it was great. I want to say so long as Cameron hasn't struck, snuck in and ticked us as resumed. Ah! I want to save my point for a spicy book reading again. Nah, he did awesomes already. F, I guess. Ah! Evidently, I can't sing on command. This is, this is stressful. I'm getting so hot under the collar over here. Oh my goodness. What else did we do? The blue curacao. We did that thing. Yeah, we did the. Uh, oh, it was a Caribbean blue. And that was by John DeBerry from, I believe it was his book, Saved by the Bellini. Afterwards, we made ourselves a cosmopolitan, apparently a staple drink in the gay community. It is sour, but it's balanced and it's tasty and it makes you want to order more cosmopolitans. And I think that's a pretty good thing. He owes me 3,000 power channel points worth of songs to be claimed at my leisure. Oh my goodness gracious. I think what I need to do, honestly speaking, I think I need to plan out the whole sing song thing better. I don't know how to properly, I don't know how to properly execute that evidently on the spot. I will admit, I'm very embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry for that. And now we had a vodka soda. That's where we landed. What was it? All the different cocktails and stuff. Oh, we only made five this evening. Wow. Look at us now. At almost a three hour mark. This is great. I have a ton of points. I'll just redeem them at random. Yeah, what was it? I did the, uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll riff on that. I feel bad about that. Sorry, dearest. Sorry, everyone. I apparently don't have it in me to do my sing song units this evening, so... I'm sorry about that. But we did do cocktails, right? On the topic of cocktails, we made quite a few of them. All in the sake of pride. All for the beauty of the pride and the prideful community, like the people you see before you. Anna says, I think it's cute. You're good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And that was all the cocktails that I have this evening. Mostly because I think it's probably 78 degrees in this apartment because I did not turn on the air on. I did not turn the air on before this stream started and I am so extremely hot under this flag that I have here and all the buttons that I've adorned myself with. So I am quite literally exhausted back here. And as such, it is time for me to take my leave. Request consumption. I will most certainly consume the rest of this Tapo Chico. Just kidding. I can't do the rest of it because it's really, really bubbly. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm just giving you crap because that is just how I show my love. Heckling is okay in chat. That's true. That's true. Breathe in. Breathe out. Thank you everybody so much for coming to this bar stream. I am not joking when I say that this is, this is the end. The end for this particular stream here. Although I will say that Pride Month is not over and I plan on doing another private. This is the first time that I'm doing two quasi-related streams in a row. So next week on Wednesday, actually wait, I'm going, let me go to the end screen over here because we're, we're done. This is the signal that we're done. <laughs> this is the dumb part. We're not going back now. I don't have a keybind for that. Actually, technically I do. I'm just kidding. In any case, consume the lemon! The lemon, okay. Next week, we're doing rainbow cocktails. Cocktails related to the rainbow. I will put out there, for all the people who are here now, the goal is to be able to do a cocktail for each color in the rainbow. Which rainbow that is, I'm not exactly sure. There are many different rainbows out there. But I'm curious to know what your guys' thoughts are on that. And so this is what I will do. Because the content creation lords have said that a call to action is necessary, I'm just going to speak to the world when I say, I want your opinion. I want to know what kind of cocktails that you want to see in upcoming streams and themes and whatnot. So please, please reach out to me. I am free to be reached out to on Discord. You can DM me. You can DM me on Instagram because we're on Instagram. You can DM me on Twitter. I'm active on Twitter. There are so many different ways to get this con type of content, mostly because I want it to be more about this ongoing conversation between me and you, because it's fun. And I'm trying to make myself less introverted for the purposes of this sort of thing here. And I think it's fun and I like people. So this is where we are. So I will put out there that there is a Discord server that you can join if you'd like to. There's a cocktail blog on there. There are people who are all wonderful on there. And I am also on there. There is a TikTok and an Instagram and a YouTube, which you can also follow. The YouTube specifically for VODs. But also there's shorts that are being created now. Mostly because 
I have found that short form content is actually kind of fun to make, so I've been experimenting with that a little bit. You can find me doing small, less than a minute long videos on all of those platforms. What else do we have there? Um, I'm supposed to be looking in this direction. There is also a Twitch on there. Yeah, if you're catching the VOD after the fact, all this stuff originates on Twitch. That's where you are right now, right now being the current day. This is great. Discord is highly recommended. Go give ideas in the Discord. It's in the workshop or in the YouTube comments. Ooh, yeah, literally anywhere. This is this is me attempting to just remind the world that this is an open conversation. I don't do this alone. None of this awesome stuff happens alone. So uh, this is my request to the world. And also my solemn thanks. Because I'm thankful for all you joining me. So, to all of you out there, no matter where you find yourself, perhaps you have a cocktail in your hand, perhaps you don't. If the morning is happening where you are, and you're starting your day off with a cocktail, I salute whatever journey that you were about to embark on with the rest of your day. If your night is coming down, just like it is for me, then I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night. It doesn't, I don't really care what side of the world you're on, whether you're across the pond or otherwise, we're all friends here. We're all fellow barmates, at least in my eyes, and I'm thankful for that. So as your bartender for the evening, which I'm thankful for being, I bid you all farewell, until next time. So, until then, y'all. Bye.